All right, good evening, folks. I want to welcome everybody to the May 22nd uh, Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Uh, we've got a busy agenda tonight, but we will move through as efficiently and smoothly as possible. Uh, first item on the agenda is to approve the minutes from the March 27th meeting. Are there any questions about the, uh, the minutes that we received in that packet? Questions or comments? All right, well, I would then seek a motion to approve. So moved. Very good. Do I hear a second? Yeah, second. Very good. Any discussion? All in favor? Very good, thank you. Seeing no old business, we'll move forward with new business. Uh, first item on the agenda is to hear the request of Russ Doucette, representing Greg Otterbean, owner of the property at 42 Reef Road, to convert a portion of a house into an accessory dwelling unit. And that's based on section 19-7-5 of the zoning ordinance. Uh, I'd ask our code enforcement officer to to review the matter briefly with us. Offer any comments? Sure. Uh, 42 Reef Road is a non-conforming lot in the RA zone. Uh, Mr. Doucette uh, is doing, in the process of doing a tear down, rebuild. The, the old house was torn down on the property and he's building a new one. And the owner would like to have a small accessory apartment in the basement for a family member is my understanding. Correct. And uh, I guided him down this path. Very good. And Mr. Doucette? Yes. Uh, feel free to offer us some details on, on the project. Uh, well, about a year and a half ago, we, uh, my, my client, uh, Mayor Beth and Greg Audubon, purchased the property at 42 Reef Road and are moving, uh, moving from California back to Maine uh, with the intent of building a new home and building an accessory or an apartment, in-law apartment in the basement for their extended family who enjoy, who are not from this area, but enjoy coming and staying for an extended period of time. With the apartment downstairs, they feel more comfortable staying there longer, not bothering Greg and Mary Beth. Pretty simple. And do members of the board have questions for our applicant? For Mr. Newsett. Good question, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. So where exact, ben, ben mentioned it's currently under construction? Yes, it's almost complete. Almost complete, okay. It, maybe this is directed towards Ben a little bit, but typically these applications are you've got an existing single family home you're adding a, uh, an accessory uh, apartment and you know we, we, uh, <clears throat> many of the standards speak to that where you're adding um, so much to the house or, or mm -hmm. not you're just maybe partitioning off um, an area that's going to be used for an a accessory dwelling unit and there are some standards um, about exterior alterations that have to be, um, I guess, compatible with the neighborhood. Where this is a, a new structure, do you have an opinion on how uh, the, those standards should be reviewed? I think they can be reviewed the same. The, the zoning board has uh, approved this prior for a house that, for, an, for a vacant lot where the architect was proposing a brand new house. So I don't necessarily think everything has to be complete prior to the proposal. On the original building permit, there was not a kitchen proposed down there, and then the, you know, the project evolved, and the owners decided it would be nice to have a little kitchenette in the basement. Uh, so as that evolved, the conversation started, but it, it was their intent when they started the building process to build a single-family dwelling. So 
this didn't this didn't change anything. It didn't change the appearance of the house or the size of the house. Uh, it just added a very a, a small kitchenette to the sure, basement. Sure. Okay. Yeah. It, so on the application, there's a question: Are there any proposed exterior alterations? It was checked yes. Um, But there's no there's no existing house really, so um, <clears throat> I, I don't want to confuse this. I think it's a fairly simple application. I think it uh, again. I don't want to get stuck in the weeds here. Just uh, just a, a yeah, little there, different than yeah. What moving we further see. on, in, in number six, it says there's there's no exterior appearance change as the right apartments in the basement. I did have a question about uh, related parking because there is a provision in the ordinance that, that addresses that. Uh, would the intention be that any occupants would take one of the garage bays or? or what would Correct. It's a three car garage. Okay. Plenty of uh, parking for in laws coming in. Very good. And then it, I didn't note from the plan is there an ex exterior? Means of ingress and egress? Yes, there is. Okay. Yes, there's three actually. There's uh, two egress windows in the basement okay. that are off the kitchen and off the bedroom, and then there is a, a people door on top of the stairs. questions for okay. Mr. Doucette at this time. One additional question. The, um, the interior connecting door that's required uh, under the section, is that this secondary door in the basement? Yes, it is. And this is a full height? Yes, it is. Basement? Okay. Yeah, it's 10 feet. I'm good. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Doucette at this time? All right, hearing none, I would invite uh, Mr. Doucette to you can stand down for now. Thank you very much for your presentation. And I would invite, in, invite anybody, anyone else from the public who has any comments or questions to please approach the podium and identify yourself. My name is Connie Pacillo. I live at Three Reef Road, which is his property is across the street, or 42 Reef Road is across the street from me. And looking at the ordinance, it looks like um, that uh, apparently the original plans didn't include this, this uh, ancillary or additional dwelling. And according to 19.7 or dash 7.5, no accessory dwelling unit is permitted where a variance is also required. So uh, I would respectfully request that this be denied based on the ordinance. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from, from members of the public on this particular application? Uh, Code Enforcement Officer McDougall, did you receive any email, questions, comments, anything via telephone? I didn't receive anything formal. I had a couple telephone conversations regarding it. Nothing. Okay. No, no strong opinions. Hearing no further questions, we will go ahead then and, uh, and close the, the public portion of the meeting. The board will now hold its deliberations on the application if, if, if that's the will of the board. <coughs> Very good. So the question is, was there a variance required for the, the original building permit? No. Okay. No, the building permit complies with okay. dimensional standards. So to be clear, because there is no variance required as a portion of the application, then that particular provision that Ms. Porcello just cited doesn't seem as though it really applies to our deliberations. I think we can agree to that. Yeah, I, I, I don't think a variance is applicable. Okay. 
to the to the property. It's it doesn't need a variance. Okay. All right, Chair. Yes, just to be clear. Yes. There's two points concerning the variance. Whether there's a variance for the first building permit for the initial construction, and whether there would be a variance for this particular application. In our rain agreement, there was no variance then nor now, so that takes that box and that, that issue does not arise. <coughs> Is that right? Well, uh, I can answer the first question. Okay. Is there there is there is no need for a variance for any dimensional standards in the zoning ordinance? Okay, and what, what, the applicant's not asking for a variance in this application, so a, a variance is not before the board, and it's not part of the uh, code enforcement officer's file concerning this property. property. Correct. Yes. Since this application is a conditional use permit, and not a variance, all, all we're required to do is find that it meets the standards in the code, and then we're obliged to approve it. So <clears throat> when we get to the point of making findings of fact, I think we should add a number seven, that the application complies with the standards for conditional use approval in section 19-5-5D. So I think we're required to make that finding in order to approve it. So that's section 19-5-5D. Tiffany, on, on the, which code are you looking at? The gray one that you have? The zoning code. Yeah. Yeah, I think we have multiple uh, editions. Uh, on what page is the one that you're citing? It's just so that we can also Turn to that page. Okay. Find it again. I think the additional findings of fact do state those. Page 65. Thank you. Yeah, there's six, six standards. That we... The reason I ask because um, we may not all have the same edition of the oh, that's, that's that's why I asked that for the page reference. Thank you. Uh, aside from that point, and that point is well taken on on housekeeping with the with the findings of fact. Um, other thoughts, questions from the board on, on how we wish to proceed with this application? I move approval subject to the addition of uh, an additional finding of fact number seven relating to the standards for conditional use approval. Find that they have complied with those standards. Second. Further discussion on the motion? So were we looking at the additional findings of fact for number seven? Are we looking at 1955D or E? Standards or conditions? Standards. D. Those are the findings we have to make. Okay. Okay. in addition to the, the ones listed. Yeah, same ones. Okay. Anything further from the board on the motion? Uh, hearing no further discussion, uh, all in favor of the motion. That is unanimous, the motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Doucette. Okay. Uh, we can now proceed with uh, the findings of fact. Uh, I will read the uh, proposed findings. Uh, proposed finding of fact one, this is a request for a conditional use permit to create an accessory dwelling unit in an existing single family dwelling 
per section 19-7-5 of the zoning ordinance. Proposed finding two, the subject property is 42 Reef Road, map U12, lot 54-A. Proposed finding three, the applicant is Russ Doucette, who is representing the owner of the property, Greg Otterbein. I hope the pronoun pronunciation is correct. Otterbein? Otterbein. Otterbein. Thank you. Proposed additional findings of fact one, the proposed use will not create hazardous traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Proposed additional finding two, the proposed use will not create unsanitary conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air, or other aspects of its design or operation. Proposed additional finding three, the proposed use will not adversely affect the value of adjacent properties. Proposed additional finding four, the proposed site plan and layout are compatible with adjacent property uses and with the comprehensive plan. Proposed additional finding five, the design and external appearance of any proposed building will constitute an attractive and compatible addition to its neighborhood, although it need not have a similar design, appearance, or architecture. Proposed additional finding six, the applicant has demonstrated compliance with the requirements in section 19-7-5.B of the zoning ordinance and proposed additional finding seven, the applicant has complied with the standards for conditional use approval set forth within section 19-5-5.D. like to entertain a motion to approve the proposed findings and proposed additional findings of fact. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. Discussion about the proposed findings. Only question I have is on, on number five, um, design external appearance of any proposed building. Uh, do we need to clarify that it's, it's not, I guess, an existing building, it's under construction, it, but it's not proposed, that would be my only. Friendly amendment, Bill. Uh, yeah, I would, I would, oh, it's, I'm sorry, Mike. I would tend to agree with that. We, we've not reviewed any external appearance of the proposed building, unless we're saying it's existing. That, I guess that's what I was getting at with my question. Is, is it, it's under construction, so. We have plans. I get it, but we. We, <laughs> we have floor plans. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, this is one of the standards that's laid out in 1955. But since the uh, accessory dwelling unit is in the basement, I don't think there's much of an impact on appearance anyway. Uh, I would agree. It... We can probably safely say that the design and external appearance of the project will constitute an attractive and compatible, well, I guess it's not, it's that? not an addition. Do we need that finding? Yeah, yeah it's in the standard. It's, it's, in, the it's standard. in the standard. So I think we need a finding. I don't know that it has to match word for word, mm. especially if we make clear that the finding is applicable to this approval. Well, the, build, the building is there. They're, I mean, they're basically finishing the interior, but the whole mass of the building is there. The siding is on the house. So at this point in time, there is not a proposed building. So perhaps a friendly amendment to say the, the, of the existing building. That way we address the standards and we recognize what's, what are the facts on the ground, which is it is an existing structure. <clears throat> I would be agreeable to that, but at that point, we could find that the proposed accessory dwelling unit will have no will have no uh, change to the exterior uh, external appearance. So perhaps amend five to that end to, to simply say that the the accept, proposed accessory dwelling unit will will have no impact upon. The appearance, the external appearance of the existing the, building, of the existing of the building. building. You catch up? Yeah. Can we treat that as a friendly amendment? Is the board in agreement with that as a yes. friendly amendment? Yes. 
All right. <laughs> Other thoughts or comments on the uh, proposed findings of fact? Hearing none, uh, we can proceed with the vote. All in favor of the proposed findings? Aye. With the friendly amendment? All right, that's unanimous. The motion carries. Thank you again. Uh, we are on to agenda item two. If I can find my agenda, I have had articulated, uh, I will articulate that um, I'm, I will recuse myself from this particular application. I'm going to step down as chair, join the members of the audience for a brief period of time until we carry on to uh, agenda item three. And our, uh, our vice chair will take over duties. Here we can. You can. Okay, so our next matter before the board is to hear the request of Stephen Blatt, representing Louis, Louis A. Kochik, the owner of the property at 1122 Shore Road, map U9, lot 4B, to replace and relocate a small cottage based on section 19-4-3.B.2 of the zoning ordinance. Mr. Blatt. Thank you. Um, we have been hired by Mr. Kosick, my office has, to, um, to not to renovate um, his, the major property at this, at this um, site, and we are, have not um, finished those drawings. We're not in for a permit yet, but the small house that has been there is the subject of this consideration. Uh, it is a small guest house. It is in very poor condition. Um, it has, uh, it sits on posts. It doesn't have much of a foundation, and it's rotting. Uh, the owner has uh, asked us to consider a demolition and redesign of that cottage, and we have done so. In in doing so, we um, studied the site very carefully. The um, the residents currently is non-conforming in several ways. It is closer to the shore road than allowed, and it is also closer to the side setback, one of the side setbacks and from the water. We met with Ben on the site to discuss these issues. Um, we have designed a replacement cottage that is smaller in footprint by some 90 feet. We have relocated it on the site, so it only partially uh, sits on the old footprint. It moves slightly off of it, but in doing so, we are able to respect the sideline setback to make the setback from Shore Road less non-conforming, to respect the, s the setback from mean high water, um, and so we're asking for your consideration of rebuilding a non-conforming structure in a less non-conforming location. Is there any questions for Mr. Black? Um, since you're totally replacing the cottage, I was wondering why you didn't move it further back from Shore Road, which is sort of a busy road. We moved it as far from Shore Road as we could before we impacted the setback from Mean High Water. Oh, okay. So we're in a hard place <laughs> between water and a rock. That's a good grounds for. A if you let deal. us move closer to the water, we'd be happy to. Thank you. <laughs> I certainly appreciate, uh, looks like a lot of effort has gone into this, and I know it's a very challenging um, site. The uh, question I had here is on, on the septic system. Uh, right now, it, it is a septic system. You say that the year it was constructed is unknown, capacity is unknown. Um, is it the same septic system that the main house is on? Yes, it is. Okay. Do you have any information about it in terms of, um, I mean, you obviously know where it is, I guess, right, on the property? We do know where it is, okay. and, and it is. In fact, between this proposed cottage and the main house, it's actually in the only piece of piece of the land that it could be. Okay. Um, this is a lot of exposed ledge, and um, it's a pretty dramatic sight. I'm sure you've seen it. It's um, uh, 
there was a house inspection and the septic system was um, checked and evaluated, the tanks were checked, the pumps were checked, and everything seemed to be acceptable. I do want you to note that we are reducing the number of bedrooms in the overall project. So although this guest house does have one bedroom as it had, we are reducing the number of bedrooms in the primary residence from four to three. Uh, is the primary residence also a, a non-conforming use? I know we're not. That's not up for here. But do we know that? It, yeah, it, it overhangs the ocean. Okay. <laughs> you can't do that anymore. No. <laughs> um, one last question on on the the cottage. I, it, it might be in here, and you know, my apologies for not being able to interpret plans all that well. Do you have a comparison offhand between the height of the current uh, cottage and what you're anticipating rebuilding? The cottage itself is within inches of the same height as the existing cottage. However, one of the reasons the existing cottage is rotting is because it sits too low. It sits three feet below Shore Road. <laughs> so it's the back of it is actually a drainage swale from Shore Road. So we are proposing to lift the site itself some three and a half feet so that we can have positive drainage away from the proposed cottage. Um, so I imagine if one were to take two photographs, once ours is completed and what's there, we would be slightly higher. But we have taken care that the the ridge of the roof is parallel to Shore Road rather than the gable. So it will be less apparent. There is currently a fence right on the property line at Shore Road, which we intend to rebuild and make both sturdier and also more attractive. Um, and so we've done some photo simulations and it would be difficult to consider that it was blocking any view. In fact, it's curious. We designed the house across the street whose view we are in, but this proposal is a tiny fraction of the view from that house. Mm -hmm. And a representative of the owner visited the site uh, this week, and we heard no comments back. Any other questions? Some questions, Mr. Flat. Um, could you talk a little bit more? Of, uh, tell us about the existing foundation, the proposed foundation, and some of the site work you talked about. You talked about bringing it up three yep. feet or so, and and uh, you mentioned an existing drainage swale, and and generally, what's happening with runoff on this? Well, the, the building is in very very poor shape, and it's. Um, it's doing this and this, and it hasn't been cared for for many years. Um, it is so close to the fence on Shore Road that that has become dammed with leaves and debris. Uh, there's been very little tree work or shrub work done, so it's, it's pretty jammed up back there. It doesn't get much sun. So it's, it's nasty. And by bringing it further from Shore Road and opening it up, um, we also noted how wet it has been there, and that if we can raise the elevation and create positive drainage, we would do that only by, uh, we are gonna excavate under the existing crawl space. It basically sits a couple of inches above grade on a perimeter frost wall that I believe is block. It's, it's a pretty skimpy building. So what we dig out in the footprint tomorrow, we'll probably use around the edge. It's good soil, and um, and then grade it and plant it and loam it so that it is positive drainage, definitely pervious for rainfall, and also to take the, the water off the roof. We just want to get the water around the house and back to the ocean. So that's what we're tending to do. And it gives us a chance by moving away from our abutter, and that is on the east, the small house. I'll tell you just a minute. The small house is to the west. 
to the, the north. little house. No, I mean the little little house to the north. Yeah. The, the oh, abutter. Yeah. Right now, this this there's that tiny little house with the steep roof. That house is really impacted by this house and vice versa. We're going to move away from it and plant a tree line. I'm trying to make this a more attractive part of the entire area. Has, has anyone looked at site grading um, with regard to, to slopes and, uh, and what the grading may look like? And wh where I'm going with this is um, potential for erosion. Um, right. We have a landscape architect, Pat Carroll from Cape Elizabeth, who's mm -hmm. working with us on the project. And um, he is working on grading throughout the whole project because um, we want to reduce the um, impervious area if we can. We, are, we do have to get a permit by rule for this project from the DEP. Mm -hmm. So the grading will be a gradual. It won't drop off. And um, he's using, I would say, fairly conservative civil engineering standards for his grading. We don't have the grading now um, because we are waiting to see the results of tonight about whether you'd let us do this. Sure. Then we'll finish our grading. Sure. Understood. Thank you. Just so I can understand the drawing here. So that on this exhibit that you provided, yes, um, the gray is the current structure, the red, there's an overlap. Correct. The shading is the overlapping of the current structure. Correct. Okay. So, and then if we go south of that portion, would you say that the building is a building envelope where such a, a new construction could be made? Um, Excuse me. Excuse me, I didn't understand your question. On this lot, yes. is there any space where a similar structure could be built? Well, um, sorry, without asking for um, relocation or re, you know, essentially coming to the board. Well, I imagine, um, in fact, I think Ben stated, if you want to build right in the footprint, you can, and. We considered that at first. Um, I advised my client to build less square footage because I believe that's adequate. And um, when we saw the opportunity to respect the abutters set back to the north, we did. Um, we all understood that the building sat what I consider dangerously close to Shore Road. Um, and so we tried to move it away from the non-conforming areas as much as possible. I imagine that we could continue moving it south, but then that would impact the driveway. And the, the driveway is reconfigured in this schematic. Um, currently, there is a separate driveway for the guest house, which comes in and go straight towards the guest house where the word stone wall in a box is. So there are two separate driveways and the one closest to our proposed property is the more dangerous because if you exit from that one, there's a sight line problem, a sight distance problem. So our proposal is to use that as a one way to enter the north one, swing around and exit on the south one. If I move the house any closer, it doesn't solve any non-conformity because we've solved that one. I can't move closer to the water except by a foot or two to increase my setback from Shore Road. And so I didn't see any option I would have other than perhaps no, I couldn't, I couldn't put it anywhere else. I couldn't put it on the driveway because I would impact the south boundary. So I have to tell you, I did not look for a completely different location on the site. So where the words stone steps, there's a triangle space that it's off the 75 foot setback from the ocean. It's within 
the 25 foot setback from the southern lot and it's off 40 feet from the from the road but that would cut into your driveway portion uh, uh, and which triangle piece are you mentioning excuse me is it the triangle where the two lines emanate from walkway stones? Yes. Okay, walkway stones sits right on the septic system. That's the septic system right there. And it has been the septic system. Um, so... Where is that icon listed on this map? The, the septic system icon? Yes. I don't believe it is. It is not on our survey either. Do you have a document to show us with you, your own personal copy to show us where the septic is on the slot? I do not. Is there, on this submission, is there a line that goes to the main house that shows where the septic is? No? No. There's just that tiny notation under where it says 20,600 feet. If you move down, it says assumed septic system location. Correct. And that's all we have. It is, we don't have the design. Um, we don't have the plan. Um, it has not had any problems. And we, uh, we're not going to put more of a strain on the system. So, but you're correct, sir. I did not, uh, I do not have the exact technical drawings and location. Anything else for the applicant? Nope. Okay. You made me excuse. Thank you. Thanks. And do we have any submissions from the public? I did not receive anything formal. I fielded a few questions over the phone. Okay, we'll open it up for public discussion. Do you hear from public? Thank you and good evening. Uh, my name is Jake Bowie. I'm here on behalf of uh, Kabucha Properties, which is an adjacent landowner across the street. Uh, and just a couple of notes we wanted to make on this. It uh, appears that this is here uh, for review under section 19.4-3. Uh, to the extent that uh, it would be necessary for the board to review this, uh, I think it's more appropriately reviewed under section 19.4-4, which would be the Shoreland Performance Overlay District, which uh, I have a print off of the map geo overlay that shows that as well as I believe on the applicant's application materials it states that it's in the shoreland overlay. Uh, so I don't know if it's necessary for anything to be resubmitted in order to be properly heard on that, but in the event that it's not, uh, one of the things we wanted to address is that uh, when doing a relocation and then also a replacement, which takes into the account the same factors. Uh, the board is supposed to review that the setbacks, uh, everything meets the setback to the greatest practical extent. Uh, there are a variety of factors to be included in that. Uh, and I think some of the questions have already kind of got at what some of the concerns we saw were in that as far as the application materials go, we don't really see anything that has to do with height. Um, and that's going to affect the location of structures on adjacent properties, such as the properties across the street. Uh, also, the impact on views is something that is to be uh, reviewed for relocation. Uh, views being pretty broad, not just adjacent property owners, but this is Shore Road. I mean, pretty popular for running, biking, etc. Uh, people look right down to the road for the water. and. Uh, one of the things I'd point out is that in the purpose of the shoreland zone um, itself is to protect visual as well as actual points of access to inland and coastal waters, and that's in section 19.6.11a of the ordinance. 
Um, without having any height renderings and so forth, I'm not sure that um, either adjacent property owners, citizens, or the board can really tell what this structure will or won't do uh, as far as affecting the public's access to the water and the views, as well as uh, adjacent property owners who um, obviously have purchased property that uh, is looking out over there and with non-conforming lots, you assume that the rebuilding or anything, it's, what's there is what's there and will be limited to the current footprints except in uh, relatively extreme situations which it doesn't, I don't necessarily see that that is here. Uh, as I say, it's, it's addressed, as uh, Mr. Blatt noted, the property of butter uh, made it less non-conforming as far as that northerly property um, and slightly with the, uh, okay, uh, and slightly so with the water and the frontage, but when I was looking at the site plan, some, some of our questions were wondering whether uh, that, that building could move farther southerly and then slightly easterly. It looks like the high water setback uh, sort of starts to taper back away, and I think it was the triangular piece that was being asked about earlier. Um, our thought was that perhaps the building would go there, uh, which would also alleviate some of the uh, potential impact on visual access to uh, the water and so forth from the road for the public and adjacent landowners and that it would really bring that uh, guest cottage more in eye line with the existing building so instead of having two buildings blocking everyone's view uh, it would be actually less uh, intrusive on that respect. Uh, Another uh, something of note that we are looking at here um, was that under the shoreline, uh, some, yeah, I'm sorry, shoreland overlay, uh, any trees or other vegetation that's removed in order to relocate a structure must be replanted uh, with one native tree, three feet in height, and so forth. Um, the applicant has indicated that uh, at least one six inch apple tree is to be removed and potentially a 12 inch ash tree. Uh, naturally there's nothing in here as to where those would be replanted. Um, I'm not, and uh, although must be done. Uh, so as far as whether or not the proposed structure meets uh, the setback to the greatest extent possible, I, I don't know that there's enough material for really anyone to review anything that has to do with the views that need to be taken into account, both public and adjacent property properties. Uh, and that, I mean, it's not so much that we are necessarily opposed to the project itself, uh, but we, I mean, without the information, really don't see any way the zoning board can properly uh, uh, judge the required factors that need to be taken into account for relocation at this time. Uh, so if, if a decision is to be made tonight, then we would think it just necessarily would have to be denied without that further information. Otherwise, um, at least move to a later date when uh, that material can be provided so that that information can be uh, viewed and considered as to what the height will do or won't do to public access and the private um, adjacent landowners who uh, will have to consider options too as far as what their rights are depending on what happens with this project. Uh, thank you. Oh, and actually, I sorry, I meant to mention I had put this in a letter that we would ask could be submitted and put part of the record if uh, that's possible at this time. Yeah. All right. Do you have copies for each person? I'm sorry? Do you have copies for each member? I believe so.
Thank you. Are there any other members of the public who'd like to speak? Having heard, having no other members of the public like to speak, uh, like to open the, for discussion. Sorry, Chair. Did you want the applicant to address any points raised there? As That's an excellent idea. Uh, Mr. Blatt, if you'd like to come up and, and uh, I think we'll have some more questions for you. Thank you. Um, we had no idea that there was an objection. Um, I do want you to know that the abutters across the street, the brother who is, who is uh, challenging, uh, sits about 10 feet above our property. And so the obstruction of sight line is not real. We also did a computer uh, simulation of the existing house and the proposed house, and we forwarded it to that abutter when that abutter's representative visited the site this week. So it's not that we are hiding anything, it's just that it appears that, what is your name again? Uh, Jake Bowie. Jake Bowie? Yes, um, we did get the rendering, however, we were a little confused as to it did not appear to be from the site line of the building. That's right, we did it lower, because the lower you are on the site, the more you are impacted by any building. For instance, anyone riding by that site on a bicycle has to deal with an opaque fence before they deal with the house. Furthermore, most of the property is shaded by the trees that the abutter is complaining we must replace. We thought that by removing trees, especially the trees that impact the construction of this house, we would be benefiting any abutters from behind and above us. Um, I am somewhat surprised at this late date not to hear any objections and that the party across the street is or was our client, but um, we, we do not need to relocate the house. We can set it right in the old footprint. It's, it, it'll be smaller, it will work, it's just that we tried to make it more respectful of our butter to the north, reduce the nonconformance from Shore Road, which I find to be quite, quite difficult, and yet not um, impede upon the setback from the water. Uh, the, the view corridors are not narrow on this site whatsoever. To consider that the public as its views obstructed by this proposal is really conjecture. Uh, we've spent a lot of time on the property. It sounds to me like Jake hasn't. And um, we have looked at that from all of angles. Uh, because we have the construction drawings from the house across the street, we know exactly what the height difference is. And it's very difficult to consider that the proposed structure being moved less than 10 feet to the south changes his view alley. Thanks. Mr. Blatt, Mr. Blatt, may I ask a question? I, and I think you, I think you mentioned this in your, when you were up here previously, but can you talk about the height of the existing building uh, and the height of the proposed building. And right. and that would be, if you can add to your discussion, the height relative to existing grade for the existing house and proposed grade for the proposed house. We used the roof pitch of the existing, we hope to be demolished building, and used that on our proposed building. And working with our landscape architect, we concluded that it should be lifted to provide for a reasonably safe and healthy elevation sure. for the foundation. We talked about that. So that we will be, I think, between three and three and a half feet higher than the existing ridge. Um, and so that's objective. That's what it would be. We so could the, so probably just, diminish it by a foot or two, but we would rather be safe than sorry. 
And the point again is that um, it still is significantly below any of, and, it, and if we put the house exactly where the footprint is now, we would have to set it up on its foundation so that the back of the house up against the fence would sit on a three foot exposed concrete foundation. No one would see that, but it's not sensible in terms of drainage. Did that make sense? It, it does, yeah, just, so, just to clarify, the, as, as, as I'm hearing you, the, the proposed structure and the existing structures are very similar heights from grade, but the proposed structure will be approximately three feet higher because Correct. the proposed grade will be brought Above up. Above sea level, yes. Okay. Thank you. So, one last question, Mr. Blatt, not to belabor the roof point. Um, did you mention earlier that you were, you're changing the gable? Yes. Uh, you're, you're rotating that 90 degrees or whatever Correct. the equivalent would be. So yes. if you're staring straight on at the property, is, are you staring at the gable end? Or are you, in the proposed structure, would you be staring at the gable or staring at? From Shore Road? From Shore Road, correct. From Shore Road, you would be looking, okay. and the ridge would be consequent with the fence below it. It would okay. be in the same direction. You won't see the triangle from Shore Road. You'll see the straight line. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Now we'll open for discussion. Sorry. The public is not going to speak since so we're in the executive session. Okay. Yes. Chair, we could be. Do you want to be? Well, it's not executive session. It's so, the board discussion. I missed it. Are you asking for more comment from the public? No, no. Okay. Uh, we've, we've had our open okay. period. I, I can make some points, but I'll let you guys go first. Okay. Uh, you know, before you open it to any more public comment, I would just like to state for the record that we were provided adequate material to review this application, including, you know, a complete survey of the property showing the existing and proposed um, guest house and current photos from all directions of all the existing structures on the property, um, and a complete set of uh, floor plans and elevations for the proposed building from which we could evaluate um, the issues that were raised about the visual impact of the proposal and the height. So I, I didn't understand some of the comments that were raised before. It implied that the, the information wasn't available, but in fact, it was in our package. That's correct, and if I could clarify, uh, my office manager did state that very, the day after the application was submitted, someone came in and asked for a copy of the application. These drawings came in the day after that. Uh, I asked my office manager if she knew who came in for copies so that, you know, if, if I had known, I, I wanted to get hold of that person and say, we, we've got two more, two more items that you should have, but she didn't know who you were. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> that could be taken out. But, so, uh, so they, as far as what it looks like from the road, I still, I guess we still have questions. Yeah, that, but, sure. I, I didn't realize that those were in front of the board, so my apologies there. Yeah, and I just wanted to clarify that. Okay. Thank you. Everybody, everybody's right on that one. Great, thanks. I have one clarifying question here. There are a lot of things going on on the site plan. We are just looking at the cottage, correct? We're not looking at the driveway or, or yes. parking with the exception of making sure there's adequate parking? That, that's correct. OK. I'll provide some, some comment here. Um, I think the relocation uh, is, it accomplishes a lot of good things, actually. Um, I th it, and I agree with Mr. Blatt, it, it could be reconstructed on the, the existing footprint, um, but I think moving it away from Shore Road, even though you can't get it completely out of that front setback, 
uh, improves the site quite a bit. Um, they've pulled it out of the side setback um, on the north, eliminating that nonconformance. Um, I've I heard discussion about pulling it to the south. Um, you know, potentially it could move a little, but as you as you do get over there, you get uh, closer to that that driveway, um, which sits a little higher, it appears, and and then you've got some steep slopes there as well. So, um, you know, looking at looking at the site uh, in total, I think, like I said, I think it it improves the site quite a bit. Um, with regard to views, um, I, I can understand um, Mr. Bowie's arguments, um, or, or at least understand how he, they may not have had enough information. We've got the benefit of, of these, uh, the elevations, the building elevations, um, and we've heard from Mr. Blatt that the, um, the proposed building after construction will be approximately three feet higher. While it's higher, I think moving it away from Shore Road will will sort of re reduce the the impact of that height increase, um, particularly for people in, in on bicycles or people running. Um, so I yeah, yeah I, I just want to state. Um, that, that I, I am not in favor of rebuilding on, on the existing footprint, but I, I feel like they've done a nice job uh, with the proposed relocation. I would, I would echo those comments. I mean, we look at you know, the, the standards for relocation. Um, considering the size of the lot, we're getting smaller in terms of the building footprint. I think that's very good, the slope of the land. You know, there, there are actions being taken to address that, soil erosion, the location of the other structures, the septic, which we've addressed, um, and, you know, and then the type and amount of vegetation, which I thought were addressed very well in the application. The, the views, I think, it, to the greatest extent practical, have, have been addressed in this. I don't see the views getting any worse um, at, at three and a half feet higher, given the uh, location of the proposed uh, relocation here, so I, I won't belabor and go through every single point Mike just made, but I, I agree with that. All right, I'm troubled. All right, this is a great concept, and, you know, why not? But uh, I'm troubled in the sense that there is a building envelope area where you can put the size structure. It reminds me of an application where someone wanted to put a, a kitchen in the front of their house. And we said, no, you couldn't do that because you'd, have, you'd be in the setback. But they have plenty of space in the back of the house. But the purpose of putting the kitchen in the front of the house is to have a view. And so there is, a, there is space to put this size structure in, in a triangle area. Um, you'd have to remove the steps. You'd have to remove portions of the driveway. Theoretically, it could go there. We you change the size of the structure that's going to go there. I asked about the septic. It's not entirely clear where the septic is, although Timothy raised the point and it's highlighted on my map here. Um, it's north, and it's not, the septic is not part, if, that's, if this map is correct, it's not part of this building envelope that I'm talking about. So then I look at page 46 in the code, and under B, to the relocation. Um, on the fifth line down, they talk about a non-conforming structure may be relocated. Let's assume that the rest of the board agrees that it should be relocated. One of the requirements is that the applicant, quote, provided that if the use is not connected to the public sewage, sewage system, comma, the applicant demonstrates the present subsurface, subsurface sewage disposal system meets the requirements of state law and the subsurface water disposal rules, comma. Now, we can make a condition that that has to be satisfied, but I'm not aware of evidence being submitted tonight or in the papers, correct me if I'm wrong, that that requirement has been met. 
So on the one hand, there's space where it could be moved with some difficulty, I get it. Uh, and then the other point is that there has to be a representation that that's, that condition is met. My third point, and, and we've had a debate on this particular issue on many times before when we talk about relocation and, and setbacks, is that the last sentence, in no case shall a structure be relocated so as to increase its nonconformity. And now we have to dis discuss what is a nonconformity. You know, is it just the, the straight line to a setback, or if it, you know, if we're moving the, the box, if you will, it, you're outside the setbacks. Uh, of, the, of the original footprint. And is that something that we should be considering as well? So, I, I have three points. Let me know how you'd like to handle any of them. Can I tackle one of them? Please. The septic system? Please. I, that's fine to put, uh, if you were going to do anything on an application, to put a condition that the septic system needs to be demonstrated that it complies with state rules uh, it does comply with state rules because you know older systems are allowed to persist as long as as long as you're not expanding the use of the system right? and they're actually reducing the use on the septic system so they they do have a compliant septic system to the best of my knowledge that complies with the state law I mean, my, my thoughts on that certainly adding adding the uh, that condition in there would be fine uh, I mean I, th I think just as completely objective matter it decreases the non -con this proposed plan decreases the nonconformity because it takes it takes one setback that's violated and it takes that off the table and it actually decreases the size so could you decrease it more um, you know I guess potentially um, but that's probably true of virtually every application we never see. <clears throat> so we're not increasing the nonconformity. It's a slight decrease to the nonconformity. And then the question is, could it be a further decrease to that nonconformity? But I, I think that we've checked the box of no increase to the nonconformity. So on, on the nonconformity, I had understood that if the gray box remains and the distance between the road and the edge of the building is increased, so you're actually shrinking away from shore road, you are shrinking the nonconformity, mm -hmm. a linear line. Now what is different here is that the red shading is outside of the footprint of the current structure. I'm troubled with the not, you're saying that that's not a change to the nonconformity because we're now outside of the footprint. It's a change to the nonconformity, but it's not an increase to the nonconformity. And so you see the nonconformity as a global concept. And the nonconformity is that it's in the setback from Shore Road. Well, it's also a, in the setback from the side lot. There are two, two nonconformities there. I'm talking about the red, the, the new structure. Oh, okay. So, yeah, the new structure still has some nonconformity, but it's not, to me, it's not an increase in the nonconformity. Seems the analogy is when we, we've had a, a number of times we've had a, a structure that, let's say, it's five feet from the property line and when it should have been 20 and will allow them to build the house, continue on that five foot setback further back. So there's, they're not all, the new section isn't 20 feet away from the line, it's only five feet away from the line. And we, we consider that does not increase the nonconformity. We'll park that. Uh, not that I don't disagree with that point. Well, how about moving the entire structure to this other portion? To what portion? So on the SP1 map, that has the red shading of the, on the structure, there's a, the word stone steps. 
And so that if you, arguably there's, you're outside of the tidal setback of 75 feet. You're off the road 40 feet. And you are off the side setback of, it looks like 25 feet. Yes. Do, do we have a 40 foot line from the road? Yeah. Yes. Oh, got it. Thank you. Yeah. So, Matt, I, I can, I, I understand, um, I understand the, the triangle you're talking about, and, and could this red box be moved into that triangle? Probably. Look, looks close, maybe, but probably. When, when I look at that, um, I see existing driveway, I see steep slopes, I see the existing main house um, directly in line with it. Um, so, you know, when, when we consider, it take a lot of earthwork to, to move that house over there. Sure, and what they'd bring up is, uh, Matt, in that last photograph that they've got attached, um, go past SP1, that last photograph, shows the, the structure and then it shows the two pieces of the driveway, you'll see the one in the foreground is actually much higher, yeah. much, is up higher. So on the SP1 map, the driveway is not in yet. Sorry? So the gray or the green, yeah. that's, that will be new if this is approved. So what Aaron was talking about on the photograph, there are two separate driveways. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, but there is there is an existing. Anyways, my my point is, when I look at this, I see a lot of earthwork, uh, challenging site work challenging slopes, more potential for erosion. I, I don't see much um, sense in putting this house right behind the existing house. Um, clearly this person has rights to views of the ocean as well, uh, in forcing them to, to tuck that behind the, the main house. While you could potentially eliminate the the nonconformity from Shore Road, I see it as maybe not practical. But I, I don't disagree that it's probably possible. Just to clarify the record, the, the kitchen you referred to a little while ago that was denied, that was a variance, which is a which is a different yep. which is a different standard. Yep. I mean we have we have to balance a lot of uh, a lot of factors when we're looking at, to the greatest extent, practical. And at least for me, when I try to balance all the factors that we're looking at, I, I think where it's, where it's proposed is accomplished, like I said, accomplishes a lot of the goals we, we're trying to promote here. In, uh, in, in looking at this, proposed driveway plan in conjunction with the way it was explained by the applicant's architect. Uh, they're trying to address a, an existing safety issue with this driveway. And if the uh, guest cottage were moved, it would make that driveway impossible because there is a, will be a retaining wall. And the driveway's narrow as it is. And I, that, that I'm familiar with that location there is a valid safety concern there that needs to be addressed in addition to this request for a relocation of the guest house. I, I agree. Um, I think the way the driveway is set up now, it's kind of an in and out, like one way in, the other way out, and on shore road, that's pretty important. Backing Instead of shore backing road, on onto the road. No. Because of all the trees and the fences, there's uh, no sight line. <clears throat>
just so that we're clear, we, that we are not viewing this as a relocation application. Hmm. I think we are. Right, Replace are and we, relocate. What are we? All right, so the, the thing that's there is being cut off the foundation and moved to a new location. So it's not a relocation. It's a reconstruction, right? And a relocation, right? So essentially you're combining the two, two steps into one, right? Yes, being relocated and replaced. Right, so. The same provision applies. If you look under Section 3, Reconstruction Replacement, the last sentence says 1943.B.2, those conditions apply. But just so that we're on the same page is that it's not real relocation. It, it, essentially, it's, it's a two-step two process, allowing the, it to be removed and reconstructed elsewhere. Do you, Matt, do you, yeah. view, do you view relocation as, as the, a narrow definition of picking the building up and moving it to a new foundation? What would be, what, what is relocation? I'm struggling with the, the, the purpose of these two provisions. The relocation is the thing, the, the fixed object that's moving, which is the gray box that's on the drawing. And so that permission allows you to jack up that structure and move it. Now, if we turn the page, we're talking about reconstruction of the thing, which is um, remove, you know, burn the place, the, the gray box down, and then build new. So we have this lacuna, this, this mix of the two concepts here. They have the exact same standards, though. So I, I agree with you. I mean, it's what are we looking? Which which section are we are we talking about? But they they really have the exact same standards. So my, my concern here is that is the code telling us that you have A or B, but not both, because the, the, it's already non-conforming. They don't want to have a new structure elsewhere on the property that's also non-conforming. It gets back into what's con what's a non-conforming structure. Mm -hmm. I mean, my interpretation of this is you have a structure. It's a it's defined as or defining it as a cottage or a small cottage, and that concept of the structure is being relocated. It's not necessarily exactly the same pieces of wood, bricks, beams, what have you, um, but it is the cottage, it's the cottage that exists, and as long as it's, it is, hey, coming back to this, not increasing in its nonconformity, that's the concept it, it, uh, that this yeah. uh, definition in fact, addresses. Matt, I, I, I tend, I, I hear you, I, I'm not so sure this doesn't fall under reconstruction or replacement, but that clearly allows uh, this type of so in, if the board is so inclined, perhaps we have a finding of fact that what we, are, we have an artificial relocation and then a reconstruction. So that's, that's if that's, and I'm also I'm, I'm warming up to the idea that the practical extent problem of moving the structure uh, where the elevation issue is. So I'll propose an amendment to the findings of fact if we're going that way. Okay. 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 Under either section, though, the board ha has the power to grant the relief requested. Yes. So Matt, you, you want to add, when we get to findings of fact, you want to add 
another to it. It could be um, we alter the matter before the board, so we just refer to both sections of the code that we're talking about. So you would uh, actually change the mat change the matter before the board. Yeah. So that, that last sentence would would say to replace and relocate. It's not relocated. It's, <laughs> you have to include the word. Uh, reconstruct in there. A small cottage based on section uh, 43B2 and 43B3. In, fa in fact, the application, the application form checks both the relocation and the replacement boxes, so. <laughs> Actually, the, the notice also references <laughs> B2 and B3. So there you go. So I think that marrying the findings and conclusions up to the application is a, a more oh. solid way to go. You guys are the lawyers, I'll let you <laughs> decide that. And just so we're clear, the, just one of the late submissions was that uh, it's in the RP3 zone. That has no impact for the application purposes? Uh, there will, that affects the building code, and we do have a floodplain ordinance. I do not believe it has an impact on the matter at hand. It has no impact for the purposes of setbacks as to this application? Correct. Thank you. Okay. If the board moves to approve, I would recommend a condition that vegetation removal complies with shoreland zoning. And so Ben, you're proposing another finding of fact, like a, an, an additional finding of fact that the structure will comply with the shoreland zoning? A condition of approval. Condition of approval. Yeah. Are we ready for a motion, Mr. Chair? Yes, we are. Sorry, can we add? I apologize. Um, the other point was the, the septic condition. Um, it's, uh, it's implied, obviously, but I think we should have it here as well. Yes, yeah. it's required in that um, paragraph two there. Um, Something like the applicant um, shall demonstrate that the present subsurface sewage disposal system meets the requirements of state law and the subsurface uh, water disposal rules. Page 60, uh, 46. Page 46. Okay. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Ben, do you have a way to satisfy that condition of approval? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. I move to approve the request of Stephen Blatt representing Louis Kasowick. Kasowick, thank you. The owner of the property at 1122 Shore Road, map U09, lot 4B, to replace and relocate a small cottage based on sections 194-3.b.2 and 19.4-3.b.3 of the zoning ordinance with the following conditions. Number one, uh, removal of vegetation be replaced in accordance with shoreline zoning regulations. And the applicant demonstrates that the present subsurface sewage disposal system meets the requirements of state law and the subsurface wastewater disposal rules. Second. Who seconded? I did. Okay. You sit here. Seniority. <laughs> All in favor? Uh, can I just add, yeah. is, is there any place that we want to um, 
just uh, confirm that this just applies to the cottage? Doesn't apply to the driveway, doesn't apply to the house. Do, are, we, are we comfortable with the matter before the board stating that? Is there any need to, to clarify that further? So you used the it. What's the it? Um, that this, this uh, just applies to the cottage. It doesn't apply to the driveway, the house, or anything else on the site plan because there are a lot of things going on. Are, are we satisfied? I'm satisfied. I just want to point it out and make sure everybody's satisfied. I'm satisfied as well. Okay. I do. So, all in favor? Which passes unopposed. So I'll read into the record the findings of fact. Number one, the property is a non-conforming lot in the RA zone. That's still correct? Yes. There is a house and small cottage on the property. Additional findings of fact. One, the Zoning Board of Appeals has considered the size of the lot, the slope of the land, the potential for soil erosion, the location of other structures on the property and on adjacent properties, the impact on views, and the type and amount of vegetation to be removed to accomplish the relocation. Number two, the proposed structure will not increase the nonconformity of the existing structure. And number three, the proposed structure is in compliance with the setback requirement to the greatest practical extent. All in favor? We have the we have those other things on the conditions in the approval. Those are already in the those are already in the approval. Okay. So moved. So moved. Second. All in favor? Unopposed? So. I believe we're all set. We're yes. All set. Thank you. to agenda item number three, which is to hear the request of Christopher E. Small, owner of the property at 5 Rocky Point Road, to expand their non-conforming single family dwelling and garage based on section 19-4-B4 of the zoning ordinance. Uh, before we hear from Mr. Small, the code enforcement officer, has any comments on the application? Uh, Chair, may I interrupt? Yes. Uh, I live on uh, Hennepin Cove Road. Um, I don't know the applicant. Um, I don't believe I'll be impartial, but I wanted to raise that um, this particular applicant is at the far end, not on Hennepin Cove Road. But given the proximity, I thought I'd raise it as a potential conflict. Thank you. Chair, you have to respond to whether if there's an issue that I have to. Sure, sure. If anybody on the board feels as though we need to deal with this as a, as a conflict, I'm uh, comfortable with Mr. Caton's representations that, that uh, he is good to go with this. I'm also. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Thanks. Mr. McDougall. Okay. Uh, Mr. Murray came to me several weeks ago uh, with a proposed addition, and uh, this is a re relatively small lot and has an old house on it that does not meet setback requirements, and they're proposing to expand the house, and they are proposing to expand within the side setback. Therefore, I advised him that he would need a zoning board approval to do so. Would then turn it, turn the podium over to the applicant when you are ready. Yeah, I'm, my name is uh, Ben Murray. I'm uh, representing the Smalls. I'm uh, from Coffin Engineering in Augusta. Take a look at and if 
the uh, uh, public wants to uh, use them as well. More than welcome. Uh, so the smalls uh, came to our office requesting a design for their existing cottage. Um, they wanted to increase the size of their residence for the addition of a bedroom, as well as uh, some office space and some a new entryway um, uh, to make their space uh, a little more usable, as well as uh, replace their garage that is in pretty poor condition. So our first step is uh, we went in, we did a complete boundary survey. Uh, they actually own two lots. Um, and the way they are taxed right now, they're actually two separate lots. Uh, the owner is in the process of merging the two lots. Uh, he has submitted uh, paperwork with the assessor's office to <clears throat> get that uh, going so they'll be on one tax card now. Uh, he has a lot out in front and then a lot out in the rear of the property. Uh, so the, the first drawing is the is our existing survey drawing. And from it, you can see that this is the existing uh, residence. <clears throat> the lot lines continue all the way in the back. This is the second lot. Uh, this is the primary and first lot up front. This is the existing garage, um, as is. So this plan is always as is, nothing proposed on it. Uh, the existing septic is located here. We uh, were able to find the original design. I believe it was constructed in 89. Um, and then the associated existing parking. Uh, we have labeled on all the site plans as well as the existing the setback. 20-foot setback uh, from actually 25, sorry, 25 foot setback, which is this line right here from this property line, and 25 foot setback from the other property line. So the first thing we all noticed was that the existing building um, impinged on the setback. Um, and from talking to the smalls, they obviously the, the easiest <coughs> way to construct this addition was to come off from this gable end. This is the gable end here. So we knew setback was going to be an issue. Uh, so we started laying out the proposed addition um, off this gable end. Gave them pretty much what they were looking for, a lot of iterations back and forth, and, and came up with a, um, a solid site plan. Elevations that they were, they were happy with. Um, knowing that we would have to come for a variance for this um, setback. Um, so what we did is, this just shows the existing building the way it is now. Four plan elevations. And so what we did, we developed a uh, site plan. This was the uh, right before submitting uh, for the ZBA variance for the setback, as well as the reconstruction of the garage. I came in and saw Ben when we reviewed the plan. Um, this was the position that we were looking to have off the game one, as well as the This 
location is concerned. They have some uh, lawn area, and the view towards the ocean is up this way. So their view is coming up through this way, through these buildings, up to the ocean. So we knew that was going to be uh, a potential issue. So we started to um, look at different options. What we could do, good faith effort to uh, to reduce our addition in order to keep this uh, established view and to minimize it. Uh, the smalls that want to be good neighbors with everybody in the neighborhood. Uh, so they wanted to take the first initial step to do anything they can to help mitigate that. So what we did is we went back to drawing board and we came up with this option two. Um, what we do with option two, instead of taking a more easy route and putting the square footage that they desire towards the gable end, we wrap the addition around the west side of the building. Gave them approximately the same square footage, but we were able to reduce the width of the addition on the north side gable by quite a bit. If you look at the difference between the two, you can see how far this stuck out and how far the proposed addition and this option two sticks out. What, what is the rough differential on that? Rough differential? Yeah. Hold on one second. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> got to a point where the smalls were, were still happy with it and we feel that uh, it was a good uh, initial effort to um, maintain that established view and uh, try to be a good neighbors on the same sense. Um, the next issue that me and Ben discussed was the wetlands in the, at the north end of the property. I believe it's the uh, Holt property that's located uh, over in this area here. Um, when first I looked at it initially, we took the, uh, the zoning uh, maps and the over overlaid it on our plan. And we've got the, uh, we should, we've shown this dash purple line as the resource protection line. That's on the uh, zoning map. So this is uh, resource protection. This is RA zone. And we also took off from that plan the uh, shoreline zone. So this is the shoreline zone line, and again the RA zone. Um, so going into our initial meeting with Ben, uh, we had a good understanding that we were quite a ways away from that line for that resource protection facility. RP1, I believe. Uh, at the meeting, uh, Ben was able to uh, give us some wetland uh, delineation from the whole property from a prior project. And uh, we brought that, scanned it, brought it into our drawing, and found that the, well, that the, uh, well we first discussed setback. Um, we talked about the setback of RP1 zones, 250 which would come into our project quite a bit. But we also discussed uh, there are a couple of exceptions in the um, ordinance that allows us to be reduced to 100 foot, foot step back. Uh, the first of those uh, exceptions is uh, if the project's 250 feet from the project, if it's a dense area, has six or more uh, residents, it can be reduced to 100 feet. And I put that in your packet proving that we have at least six in our 250 feet of our project. Um, the other exception that we do need is uh, if you look at the topography, and I don't know if you might be able to tell them in large plans, but you can tell from this plan, but the, the 
target field of sight is low in this area, and then it escalates up towards the rear of the back lot. So there is a ridge that goes along this whole back lot. And once you get after this uh, property line, it starts to dive towards the rear wetland. So all the uh, stormwater drainage um, is blocked from actually blocked from that wetland from that ridge. So we actually met two of the exceptions. Um, I, mean, I believe it was like uh, four or five. So um, I believe that we actually met a couple of them. Um, and then uh, the next item we discussed was uh, septic. Um, with this addition, the, the new septic system, even with the option to, is going to be prepared as well as we're adding an additional bedroom with this addition. So we'd have to do something with the setback anyway. And we have this new driveway that's coming around that would impact the existing septic. So we've, we've shown a new septic field in this location here. We've kind of designed and it's part of the uh, solution package. Um, and then the next uh, item was uh, stormwater. The site is located um, pretty much in a dip um, around the entire abundant properties. You've got high terrain here. Uh, the high terrain it slopes up in this direction to the east, slopes up slightly in the west, and then slopes up towards uh, uh, Rocky Point Lane. So even now, you have a lot of places where Water collects in areas, sets, and then drains into the ground. Um, with the second option, we actually reduced our, our net, uh, our change in the purpose uh, quite a bit. Uh, it got better. This option, the proposed increase in purpose is 1,700 uh, square feet. And the first option, uh, was 1,800. So, so we gained a little bit. Um, not huge um, increases in purpose at all, but what we, our main concern was given the, uh, the slope of the land, um, we don't want to drive stormwater on our neighbors. Um, so what we decided to do is uh, create a, a series of three areas where the water will uh, settle out and infiltrate into the ground instead of going over to the neighbors. This includes this area in the middle, this area down here, this area up and back. Um, we've, we're showing roof leaders off from the uh, new roof going to these areas. Um, so the uh, stone water can infiltrate the ground rather than trying to uh, go to the neighbors. I think we're overall shows the floor plan um, of the actual space that's in the packet. It resembles the outline that's shown in the site plan. It's shown the mass bedroom and the office of the tree. Uh, it shows the proposed allocations. Uh, shown the existing building as well as the proposed addition. Hey Ben, yeah. would you mind just pulling the mic a little oh. bit this way to make sure people at home can hear you? Thank you. Um, so the, ex the proposed addition is, while well, the existing building is a two-story building, uh, the proposed addition is only a one-story structure. Uh, looking at the 
north elevation. You can see that this peak here is the existing two-story peak. And this here is the addition on the north side. Uh, and this is the garage that is being looked to be replaced. We are looking to um, another variance that we're asking with this project is the reconstruction of this garage. We are asking um, to increase the height of the existing garage. The garage is in a little bit of a hole right now, so site grading wise, it would be better to lift it uh, approximately a foot, um, as well as we're changing the roof slope for a better uh, slope of snow off the roof. It kind of has a an odd double pitch shed roof right now. We want more of a consistent roof pitch. Uh, so I have dashed the line in where the existing height of the garage peak is right now, and this is the new height. Uh, you'll see it on some of the other drawings as well. On the west elevation, this is the proposed addition. Ridge is the existing building. This roof line here is the existing roof line of the garage. And this would be the proposed ridge line of the garage. It does not go above the proposed ridge for the addition. And then this is the elevation looking Looking from uh, Rocky Point Lane, this is the garage here. Again, a dashed area for the existing peak, the new peak. This is the new peak of the addition, and this is obviously the, uh, the existing peak. So everything is quite a bit, um, obviously lower elevation than the existing. Uh, it's all one story. And so we, what we did is uh, we went and made those corrections, reviewed it with the owners, and then um, we felt that uh, we put our best effort to address the concerns that we found with the site and made this mission to the ZBA. Members of the board have uh, questions for Mr. Murray at this time. I have a, a quick question for you on um, uh, what's the elevation along Rocky Point between this site and your you know, butter to the west and as you get further is it fairly flat does it slope in one direction ground elevation yeah just the natural topography yeah. Existing wise, you're talking about along this line right here. I'm just talking about the natural grade of the terrain, just as it is now. As it is now, yeah. As it is now, uh, the the natural grade is it's about flat right here as with the neighboring property, and it escalates up as you go through the rear of the property. Does it? As you're going though between your property and, and the property to the west, is the property to the west higher, lower, same? If you look at the, if you're standing on the leach field, yep. this is about elevation 101. This is elevation 100, so it is sloping towards the west. Okay. 
So that is why we went and created this little swale area to capture that water coming off from part of this roof. This whole driveway here is sloping towards this middle space, but it may be capturing some of the water off from this roof, the leaders here into the swale in order to capture that. So it's actually improving it. It's we're lowering it towards our property so it can infiltrate. Is your question really about um, these two neighboring houses here, the, the yeah, that, house that, and the one next door? That, that's more of it, but I think we'll probably be able to get to okay. some of that a little later on. And you? Yeah, could, could you talk a little bit about the septic system in relation to the resource protection buffer? Yes, the, we designed the uh, addition, the, I mean the replacement system um, prior to having the uh, wetland delineation that Ben gave us. So right now, the 100 foot setback is this red line right here. And it currently goes through the replacement system. And if that is uh, an issue, we can um, pull that back towards the house. Uh, minimize this area some and get that out of the setback. Um, but we left it as is only because we had the system design with option one uh, prior to that setback information. Thank you. Matt, did you have a question? Yes, Mr. Murray. The road that we're talking about, Rocky Point uh, Lane, it's fairly flat. And on the topography here, it looks like it's 100 thereabouts. 99, 100, 101. So this, the applicant's property is slightly higher than, uh, let's see, the property to the north. To the right, where's the, the west side? Seven. Seven. You're gonna go with west. 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 So, could you get your highlighter, like the, the, the structure to the top of the map? That's, is that north? That's east. East, well there we are. Yeah, north so that, is off towards the back. Right, so that is uh, slightly lower than the applicant's property. Do you agree? This one is... It does, it does pitch here. This is 100, this is 99. Uh, so that right now there is a natural swale this way. I would call it. Yep. Uh, how, how, what is your thinking as to the, the, the tilt and the slant of the driveway to, to the runoff there? What we've done is we've had the, this new driveway here yeah. is a high point and everything is pitched this way towards this, this area and then everything is pitched, uh, uh, there's a bright point here in the middle, it goes that way and then it goes this way. Right. It, it, where is that notation in the papers? Uh, it's shown on the grading, this grading plan. It might be hard to see, but if you want to look at the larger one, we can show you. Uh, and the other thing, we'll come back to that. The, how does the road, the driveway, the dark gray, connect to the Rocky Point Lane? Our driveway? Yes. Yeah, there is an existing driveway right in this location. It's paved. Kind of a dash line. Right, is that also in the paper somewhere? Yep. Which, which map? Yep, it would be on option two. I'm looking at option two. Okay. Right, it's, it's not color coded here. There's no it's not, it's not. Only because okay. it's not proposed. It's, it's staying as is. Yeah. Yep. You have a nice driveway here. I'm just thinking how do you get from A to B? <laughs> it, does, it does stick out. Right. right. Can we go back to the elevation and the tilting of the driveway? Sure. What? 
show me and, and the other board members where on the map that that is part of what you have submitted. All right, can I bring this plan up? Sure. Yeah. You're making a submission that it's deduction on math based on the numbers in the map. Right. right. That's, that is the evidence that you submitted. Mm -hmm. So if we are careful looking at the topography, it would indicate that, that is the, the driveway is sloped one way to a drainage area and to the other, right. and it's not going to be sloped to the property to the east. Any further questions on that line, Matt? Nope. Okay. Other questions for the applicant? Yeah, I've got a couple. Um, just quickly, curious as to why the septic system is being replaced? Uh, for two reasons. Well, the first, we, we knew it needed to be at least expanded because we're adding a bedroom. Uh, but the most prevalent reason is because we're sending this new driveway right through the system itself. Mm -hmm. Um, the only way to access this garage is by the, with the construction of this driveway, a loop around to that side with the addition. Um, so that's the main reason. Okay. Uh, second question. <clears throat> is the floor area of the garage increasing at all? No. So the, the Same footprint. Same footprint. The height's increasing a little bit, but the floor area remains the same. Correct. Thank you. Yep. Same footprint, same location. So the height of the, the, the garage building itself isn't increasing, but it's being built up, it's being raised. Yeah, it's two actually. It's, it's being raised because it's in a little bit of a hole right now to help better drainage towards these swales that we're constructing. Okay. And secondly, it is being increased in height uh, because of the roof slope. Um, the slope of the roof right now has, a, has kind of a shed to it. We want more of a, a linear, gable roof with a 512 pitch. So in combination, uh, they're both increasing the height of the garage. Okay. Can I give you an exact dimension if you like? Mr. Chair, <coughs> The way I'm reading the ordinance, if the if the garage is being reconstructed on its existing footprint and the square and the floor area is not increasing, then Ben can approve that with a with a building permit, and it's probably not even under review here. Is that how you see that, Ben? It it is expanding. So in the, the garages, it's expanding upward volumetrically. Uh, th there is one place in the ordinance that says I can approve it, uh, same floor area, same location, but then there's another place in the ordinance that says if, if you're expanding, you need to come to the zoning board. So <laughs> okay. Thank it you. Just, it, and it's just termed expansion. So, it, you know, the garage is expanding. Okay. Better safe than sorry. <laughs> exactly. Um, in, in relation to the... Uh, the changing of the uh, addition as well. I mean, we've we looked at the op we looked at several ways to make this uh, better for everyone. Um, Twenty-five foot setback is right here along this, along this line, and then the twenty-five foot setback for the other side is right in here. So, get back to your your point from the last. Meaning we have a, we do have a building envelope right in here that we could um, put the same square footage in, but it would push the addition obviously further to the north and impact the view from the neighbor. So we chose not to do that. We chose to skinny this up 
as much as possible. Yes, bring the addition into the setback, but not any more uh, non-conforming the existing setback. So that was uh, one point we looked at. You know, if we kept within that building envelope, and if Ben was fine with the garage, you know, there's potential there that we might not need a variance at all. Um, but we would be impacting that view um, quite a bit. Am, uh, am I correct in your application that the existing garage is only three and a half feet from the property line? It is close. Yes. Because it's not dimensioned on the uh, survey or the plans. I would agree with that. In, in the worst location, it's three and a half feet. It does play out a little bit on the and, other side. And you're, and you're proposing to raise the grade by a foot, foot and a half? Uh, we are proposing. Yes, the elevation of the proposed garage is uh, 101. And the, um, the abutting grade is about uh, 100. So we're going to have, we're raising the garage elevation, but we're going to have uh, exposed concrete on the side. So we're not bringing it all the way up to the elevation of the floor in the garage on, on the uh, west and, and south sides. It's more the north side where the cars are coming in. Mm -hmm. So it'll be a gradual coming out. So it's not a, a pickup of a, a foot right up the uh, property line. So that answers your question. In, in view of how close that garage is to the property line and that you will be demolishing it and reconstructing it and raising the height. Did you uh, review this with the property owner to the south? To the west, you mean? Well, you've got a north arrow there, I guess. Yeah. Southwest. No, no, we did not. You did not? No. You didn't review it with the neighbor? Did not, no. Are they, the are they present? Yes, I am. Will you be making comments? Thank you. Um, as to your comments earlier regarding not being able to move the garage because you were blocking somebody's view, you provided to us an aerial photograph and I don't see who you were talking about. As far as the view? Yeah. Yep. There, there it looks to be just uh, some trees and open area behind. I have some uh, additional photographs of the existing site I can pass out and give you a better understanding of what's out there right now. That'd be all right. But it, it, w it wouldn't be blocking anybody within the 250 foot radius you showed on this aerial photo exhibit that you provided to us? The only area that, that I see as an established view, it's, it's not from the house itself, it's from the, uh, the west property rear lawn area. There's a sitting area that the abutter has. And then the view is from that corner of their property out through this area right in here. Okay, well, well, they can address that, I'm sure. I'm sorry. I said since they're here, I'm sure they can address that issue. I'll show you. But I, I just don't, I couldn't follow where you were. Since I assume this is the house and this is the garage. Correct. There's nobody back here. Well, this property here has lawn that comes out back here. Right. And their view is through our property, through this here, out towards the ocean. Okay. This photo is looking from... Same photo? Yeah, thanks. 
Yeah, same so The small property towards the fire to the towards the west. You have around back chairs of the smalls. Um, in the background, you see a bench in front of the shed. Right. That is the butters lawn area. Mm -hmm. And the second photo is taken and showing um, their view from that area. So it's, I mean, it's full disclosure here. We, smalls want to be good uh, neighbors, so we're trying to take every step possible to uh, keep people's uh, views as well as give the smalls um, what they would like out of their property, so. So in looking at the second photograph you just handed out that has, kind of sees the back of the Adirondack chairs and the ocean beyond, um, the building, the small building in the foreground to the right is the extant garage? That is the garage, okay. yes. And then go. beyond it, uh, next to the truck, is the house, the current house. Yeah, that is, that is that corner of the house right there. Okay. And so your proposal is to bring that corner of the house toward the Adirondack chairs about 19 feet. Well, it's 19 feet off from the gate one this way. What we did in the redesign is we didn't hold the 19 feet. We, as it got closer to this point, which is, you know, where the view um, starts to narrow off, we also narrowed up the building. We stepped the building in. Okay. We did one step here, another step here, and this is actually just a balcony. Um, again, in order to minimize impact on that view through this corridor. Okay. Any, any further questions for Mr. Murray at this time? Keeping in mind, we of course can invite him back to the extent other questions arise. No? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Murray. The board would. Uh, Open it up to the public for any comments or questions. Ms. Broussard, I believe, correct? It is. Yes. Thank you guys um, for staying as long as you are tonight. So if anyone needs to take a break, just let me know. Um, I've introduced to you my letter of um, concern and request, as well as a um, submitted letter from a neighbor of Two Rocky Point Lane. I'm just going to go ahead and introduce myself as written. Um, I think that's the best way for me to present tonight. My name is Elaine Broussard. I'm a resident of Cape Elizabeth. And my primary residence for the last 17 years has been three Rocky Point Lane. Rocky Point Lane is comprised of 10 properties. Of those 10, my home and one other um, are occupied year round by owners. The remaining are seasonal. I'm asking the Zoning Board of Appeals to deny the application as presented tonight for the enlargement, relocation, reconstruction, or replacement of an existing non-conforming structure which was submitted on May 8th by the engineering company represented tonight. 
um, who represents the property owner of Christopher Small. Notification to me of this enlargement was given to me by email on May 5th. That was the only communication regarding the expansion of this lot. The property of Five Rocky Point Lane has historically been used as a rental property. This history is important to me um, and hopefully to the board. For the 17 years that I have lived next to it, my neighbor's property has been used as an off-season rental and as a weekly summer rental. As you can see, I am not a lawyer. I am not an engineer. I am an educator. What I also am is a Cape Elizabeth resident who values my home and my property and my community. And I'm here to be a steward of all three. I am an educator, as I mentioned. I'm a registered Maine guide, and I've worked as a national park ranger. And you may be asking, why is that relevant? It's relevant because I value my home. I will always value and I'll teach about the values of unique environments and ecosystems and spaces, which we all live in. The very nature of the, my property lies, where my property lies, reflects this value. It is why I purchased it. I value its privacy. I value the ocean, the ocean views from the backyard. I regard its fragile connection to the perimeter wetlands that have not been officially surveyed by the applicant that surrounds Rocky Point Lane and its role in the broader Two Lakes ecosystem. I value my neighbors. The communication part for me is um, instrumental to progress. While I believe in the right of my neighbors to improve upon their own property value, it should not come at the expense of devaluing my own property. And this will set precedence for other people in this position of non-conforming lots. In reference to, now we get to the technical part, in reference to the Cape Elizabeth zoning ordinances for non-conforming lots, both of which Five Rocky Point Lane and Three Rocky Point Lane fall under, the current application as it stands for Five Rocky Point Lane violates in every domain, in fact I'm more assured of that tonight after listening to the presentation, of section 19-4-2B4 under general provisions of the enlargement of non-conforming structures that state and I will read them for the public. Enlargement of a non-conforming structure not in compliance with these limitations may be permitted provided that such enlargement is in compliance with the setback requirement to the greatest practical extent as determined by the Zoning Board of Appeals in accordance with the purposes of this ordinance. In no case shall a structure be enlarged so as to increase its non-conformity. In determining whether the building reconstruction or replacement meets the setback to the greatest practical extent, the Zoning Board of Appeals shall consider the physical condition and type of foundation present, if any, in addition to the criteria set in sections 19-4-3.b.2, relocation. In referencing that section, in determining whether the building relocation meets the setback to the greatest practical extent, the Zoning Board of Appeals shall consider the size of the lot, the slope of the land, the potential for soil erosion, the location of other structures on the property and on adjacent properties, the location of the septic system, if any, and any and other on-site soils suitable for septic systems the impact on views, and the type and amount of vegetation to, the to be removed to accomplish the relocation. I want to be clear that what we're referencing tonight is option two. Option one, from my understanding, was not formally submitted in this process. It was option two that I've had to work off of. In addition to the submitted 5818 proposed leach field location not being in compliance with the town wetland codes, which Ben just addressed, their non-conforming building expansion proposal negatively impacts my property without a doubt and its value in multiple ways. Number one, the view's obstructions. While I appreciate the fact that they have tried to minimize that, the reality is that it is impacting a large portion of my view. And if you reference my images on page, I have pictures on the back, which I find this very helpful. Um, image one is just simply establishing for you the proximity of the building structures. 
I am on the right, three Rocky Point Lane. That garage is five Rocky Point Lane. You can see the perimeter line that extends between us. And I have, as my estimate, around two feet between the building structure and my property line. In terms of the obstruction of view, if you reference image two, which was not referenced in the engineer's statements. Is my mic on? Yep. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, there is a complete, a full obstruction of view from my back deck, which probably they just didn't understand it exists because I don't know if anyone's ever stood on it from that property. Image three shows the partial obstruction that they did reference in their application um, with the extended red line showing the building expansion. I did survey that, I did, I did walk that line with an engineer. Another area of concern is due to the proposed driveway and a rearrangement of their garage, if you turn to image four, you will see a proposed driveway that runs parallel to my lot that is virtually a hand throw away. So I would assume, based on the rental history of the property, that there, since this is a one-car garage, that there will be several other vehicles parking alongside that will then obstruct the views. So it's consequential to the design of the, the redesign of the um, garage. Again, I just want to emphasize for my sake, for the public, that when we diminish these property views, we diminish our values. And that matters to me as well. Um, number two, loss of vegetation, increased drainage concerns, and I think the slope of the land has been referenced here several times, and I, I didn't emphasize that as much as I now want to. I think that based on what I can see, the elevation of the garage is going up a foot. I am the low point of those properties and water will run and underground water will gravitate toward my low lot. If I look at their application on file, the potential for the slope of the land, their applicant's response is in terms of what was addressed, the slope of the existing land has no impact on the replacement of the garage or the enlargement of the residence. It does not address the impact of the slope of the land on um, adjacent properties. So in my opinion, that application is incomplete just from that information. Bear with me as I follow down my road here. Proposed expansion of driveway is another big concern. As noted, um, I think he referenced there was a slight decrease in the proposed asphalt driveway. It is increasing by 60% of its existing asphalt. My question would be to the applicant, if I was in your seat, where is that water going? How is that one foot lower swale, is that what it's called? going to resolve the drainage concerns from my property. Where does that underground water go? Does it go into my basement? If we went down there, I probably could assure you it does. Um, that, encroached, that increased asphalt is a considerable amount. Its increase is expanding from 2,865 2, square feet to 4,575 square feet as proposed. And that water runoff has to go somewhere. Without a proposed drainage plan and system that addresses that property's anticipated drainage 
from the increased square footage of the structure, from roof line runoff, without having any kind of perimeter drain system, it would be a high concern on my property. And I'm going to reference now pages seven and eight, which is uh, images seven and eight, just to show you a bit more of that. Image seven, I happened to take the day that Ben left my property after we talked and we had a little rainstorm. The current storm runoff issues on Three Rocky Point Lane as shown after a two hour rainstorm. That's what's left at my end of the road. You would not find that anywhere else in terms of, the, of Rocky Point Lane because my property is the lowest spot. If you turn to page eight, three Rocky Point Lane drainage system improvements that have been, that I have paid for, as well as some of the road and my neighbors paying for, the parts that I've paid for to address drainage concerns on my property over the years I've lived there include the septic, the um, sump pump, generator, discharge line, and then with the support of the um, neighbors on our road, since it's a, it's a private road, we agreed to install the drain cover and a culvert that goes underneath. That water flows underneath the road, back out toward the ocean underneath several properties. If I had not installed that drain system, I'd be draining my sump pump onto my driveway to eliminate the water in the basement onto the road. And that was the original concern. So I have addressed my property issues in re reference to what works for the entire good. I do not see that being addressed in terms of the application of five Rocky Point Lane. In addition to that, I have concerns about vegetation loss. I know that they mentioned there was only one tree and one rhododendron in the application. If you look at the proposed asphalt, there is a large tree that probably absorbs quite a bit of water. There's also a tree being um, that is connected, that's actually part of their porch. The porch is wrapped around it. There's, the only way they can expand that part is to remove that tree, but that is not indicated on the application as well. The last part I want to mention is the potential impact of the construction process if it ever begins. Um, with the structures being so close in proximity and knowing my own need to install a raised leach field because of backyard ledge, um, what measures will be taken by the applicant to assure that my structure and foundation would not be affected by drilling and blasting, which would have to be done to establish part of the garage. With all of this information, with the application presented tonight, with the questions that I have, I'm asking that the board consider the application as filed on, on May 8th, that not, it not be approved by the Zoning Board of Appeals tonight. In my opinion, there needs to be several surveys provided, including drainage, slope, wetlands. If they had their option two had indicated the wetlands in an RP1 zone, and I know that was noted, but I have concerns now that that oversight is related to the fact that a wetland survey was never formally conducted by the property owners. Um, and if any future application is to be um, considered, I would like the following to be considered by you. That the leach field be located within the legal wetland boundary, that detailed drainage plans that secures no additional runoff or drainage onto and under my property, to reduce the asphalt square footage of the driveway and substitute gravel for the asphalt, the reduced lot to reduce any loss of view due to structural expansion on a non-conforming lot, and that um, car the, the location of the driveway be a consideration in terms of what the history of that property is and probably what it will resort back to. Assurance of responsibility that no impact of the drilling and the potential blasting with the buildings being so close in proximity. I've submitted my visuals. Um, 
I'm hoping that the town confirms the applicant's statements on the application and whatever option is approved tonight will set a precedent on many levels for other non-conforming lots in my position for the town. I have one other letter I'd like to read from the neighbors of um, across the street from me of two Rocky Point Lane that was submitted on May 22nd. Elaine Broussard of Three Rocky Point Lane recently told me about the plan submitted to you regarding the alteration of the building currently owned by Christopher Small, whose property is at Five Rocky Point Lane. In lieu of my presence at the 522 Zoning Board of Appeals meeting, I want to state my shock at the information given to me by Elaine, my next door neighbor. I ask that you consider my opinions about such a wrongful dismantling of current zoning regulations as they apply to the non-conforming codes for the town of Cape. Such an action would create a precedent for other non-conforming lots throughout the town. Because I worry about Mr. Small's proposed plan and their effects upon the neighborhood, I support Elaine Broussard's request, request that the applica application not go forward. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Broussard. Uh, members of the board have questions for Ms. Broussard. I've got a question. Just a clarification for you. Um, in, You're not done yet. <laughs> great visuals, by the way. They, they help. Yeah, they help. Um, image two. Can you can you flip to that one? It, it's it it's labeled full loss ocean view from back deck. Yes. Can you? I, at least part of your house, I believe, is shown on this. Can you just kind of show me where that where that photo was taken? Sure. Expanding that structure to no longer allow the the view from the back deck. Okay, so the, so in this photo, the the structure on the right is the the house that's proposed to be expanded, and on the left is the garage that's proposed. Correct. To be. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Good. In, in, uh, on image seven. Um, image seven. Your image seven. Yeah. One moment. Uh, it's, it shows, I believe, your your house in the foreground. Is that the the applicant on the right there? It is. Okay. So yes, that would be five, and you can see the slope of the land. Okay, so it looks like that does slope up to there. To it does, okay. quite considerably, yes. Okay. And it's also shown in the other images. And, and also one last point on that, on that photograph. Um, kind of between your two houses, there's another house. Is that their other neighbor on the other side on the north? It's like a dark a dark two-story structure back there. Image seven, you said? Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, what was your question? Um, so it shows your house on the left, the uh, number five on the right. The one, the, the dark building kind of look in the middle, is that the further neighbor? It is. Okay. And they're set farther back, and that was some of the questions I think you had. And remember, what I've heard from the um, engineer is that, if I'm correct, the elevation of that driveway on that side is going to be higher. So again, the water flow is going to come down toward the west side, and that will go right into my property. I'd love for you guys to come out and visit my property anytime if there's a, a, visit, a site visit that will help support anything. I, I, <clears throat> just for clarification, uh, from what, and maybe if, if the applicants uh, representative wants to correct me. The way I understand the grading of the driveway and the proposed drainage is uh, runoff from the driveway will all be collected uh, in a series of depressions designed to infiltrate. So uh, at least surface runoff, I know you also mentioned groundwater, but at least surface runoff I believe is proposed to be captured and infiltrated before it runs off onto your property. Yeah, and I believe what it is is a one foot lower elevation ditch. Mm -hmm. And I don't know where that water goes except into the ground because there's no filtering out system that's been presented. It's just gonna sit or go into the ground. Sure. Okay. We're, uh, and l versus like the drain pipe that I mentioned I put into my, you know, trying to circulate systems out of the house and out of the property. Thank you. 
Where is it? You referenced, you, you actually read into the record this letter that uh, Ms. Peterson had, had has submitted as well. Where, where is her home located? Her, her full year home is in Colorado as well. But she, her residence, her property is to Rocky Point Lane. The two Rocky Point. Okay. Yes. Okay. Which is not photographed. Okay. Sorry, Chair, are you asking whether it's across the street, southeast to the property? That's what you're asking about? Yes. Okay. Could you tell us? Is, is it across the street? Yeah. Okay. Yes, it is directly across the street. Just have another question for you. Sure. Shoot. So it sounds like it sounds to me like the applicant has uh, considered considered certain views um, from your property. It sounds like primarily from sort of the, the, your back lawn, uh, and they've sort of pulled the proposed addition closer to the existing house in an effort to preserve a view that you currently have. Um, looking at the two options that are in the application. There's one option in the application. It's option two. Okay, well, we've been provided two plans, and I, I, I would, I guess I would agree there's one proposed tonight, but that there's, there's been. So that's the only one I know to work, that's the only one I've evaluated off of, based on that. Okay, I, I guess my question is, does pulling the building, does pu pulling the proposed addition closer to the existing building, do, does it accomplish what the, in your opinion, what the applicant uh, was trying to accomplish in saving some of that view? If your question is, is my view less obstructed from that option, it is obstructed, but it's less obstructed. Sure. But when you look at the entirety of the application, there are other grave issues in addition to the view loss that have to be considered. Sure. Thanks. I have one follow-up question. Could you, when we're talking about views here, where do you spend most of your time on the property? Do you spend it, uh, yes, where do you spend most of your time on your property? It's funny you ask that because you would think I'd be out front, but I'm not because there's just too many, too little property in the front with traffic. I spend it in my backyard. I garden back there. My dog's ashes are buried back there. It's where I stay and I enjoy my view. It's where I have guests come. I don't have much of a view. Um, that's okay, but I wanna preserve what I do have. That matters to me. And again, the purchase and the value of that property is that piece and that, the value of its, of its land. Thank you. Other, uh, other members of the audience who would like to comment on this application? Uh, ben, did you receive any, any emails or? Oh, oh I guess we do have. Please, st please state your name, ma'am. My name is Tana Lenhart. I live at 48 Hannaford Cove Road, which ties into um, Rocky Point Lane. Um, my question is, when you build a swale, so you collect the surface water, uh, it doesn't stay there. And I would be very concerned about water, groundwater. And um, given the geological structure of the area with all of, uh, all of the uh, ledge that we live on. Uh, I would say that foundations would be um, seriously affected. 
by water being collected and not being taken somewhere so that it wouldn't sink into the ground and cause problems. But um, I would like to say one other thing too, and I just will. <laughs> and that is, yes, please do. Uh, that is property value at that end of the road uh, really uh, uh, would be affected by loss of view. And the loss of view is 100% when you think of how uh, the view from the deck uh, is totally gone, no matter what, uh, whether it's plan one or plan two, uh, it's gone. And so what Elaine has left is the view from the backyard. So, I think, um, I think when plans like this are considered, that it's important for the uh, town to make absolutely sure that you have looked at all the aspects of the project. And uh, when an applicant says, oh, oh, the drainage won't be affected, you know, they can say whatever they want. But is that true? And have you checked? Thank you. Thank you. Further comments from uh, members of the audience here tonight? Ben, what did you receive for phone calls or emails, anything in particular? Uh, the people I spoke to are present. Okay. And uh, perhaps if it's the board's will, uh, we can hear from, from Mr. Murray in response to some of the issues that have been raised. Thank you, nice uh, presentation. Uh, just a couple responses. Uh, as far as to clarify the slope from the south side of the property, if you look at image seven, it shows the abutters property with the collected water. And then it shows uh, the smallest property in the background. And it shows uh, how it slopes upward towards the smallest property. There's actually a, a ridge there and water off from the existing building. If you look back at image six, it kind of, oops. Image six, it shows that ridge next to the tree. Actually, the water slopes back towards the garage um, off from that side of the west side of the building. Um, so I don't think they're getting any impact as far as the existing and the proposed would be in that area as far as water drainage. Um, just wanted to clarify that. Uh, as far as the side deck, you know, I didn't even think about that view. Um, but that is a good point. Um, we really concentrate on the view from the rear lawn um, in order to minimize that. Uh, as far as the, the water, um, the solution that we presented um, for the water retention are these three swales and infiltration into the ground. Um, over a period of time. There just isn't any other direction to go with the, the water in, this, in these areas because uh, the water just that's within their property. So um, that is the solution we came up with uh, in order to deal with the water. 
As far as the, the wetlands, uh, the plan that Ben gave us was a current wetland delineation. Um, and uh, that a property owner to the north did. So we were thankful that he provided that. We could go out and provide those. I don't think it's much of an issue as far as our proposed plan because the setback is such far away um, from the addition. Um, it is uh, within the new septic field, but we could move that forward and be well with it um, outside the setback. Uh, the smalls also have a sump pump in their space, so they deal with the, the same issues uh, that the abutter uh, does. And so this, our solution again was to create these swales to mitigate the existing problems as well as to take care of uh, proposed increase in impervious. Have you had experience with these manor swales before? Have you done them with other projects? Yeah, they're similar to rain gardens. I don't know if you didn't see it in your, I don't know if you have it in your zoning ordinance. Um, but they're used a lot to mit mitigate small areas of impervious um, for drainage issues. Um, it's really the, one of the only options in this, uh, in this tight spacing between residences to come up with these rain garden areas to mitigate storm water. Any other follow-up points, Mr. Murray? No, I don't think I have any more. Okay. May I ask some questions? Um, do you know anything about the, the soil conditions? Where's ledge, where's groundwater? Oh, uh, ledge, we don't. I know the existing building foundation is a combination of uh, CMU block on ledge as well as concrete piers on ledge. The building is quite elevated from the existing um, grade, especially towards the north. It's about three feet up in the air, so it has a crawl space underneath it. The addition would also be similar. It wouldn't have uh, piers, it would have a continuous foundation wall and it would be poured to the contour of ledge. So we don't anticipate any blasting, they're not creating a basement. It's just going to be a crawl space similar to what they have now. Uh, luckily they are elevated three feet so we do have the luxury of playing with that elevation. Um, as far as the garage, the elevation of that is going to be raised so we don't anticipate uh, blasting ledge at all for the formation of any type of basement. It's going to be formed to ledge. Um, but, uh, the only place that we could see possibly uh, that ledge might have to be removed would be the form would be the um, the effluent line for the new leach field. Mm -hmm. And groundwater, do you know where groundwater is? We have not found groundwater table no. Did you do any exploration or no? Um, in response to the uh, notation about the drainage from the garage, or was denoting there in the application that is the roof area of the garage is not changing, it's not expanding, so it's not increasing the impervious area for the garage. Uh, so that's why I stated it the way I did in the application. <coughs> no. Question for you: the so the the garage, the location of the garage, and the orientation of the garage, such that cars are approaching it from the rear, is is really driving this U-shaped uh, driveway design. Right. Um, has, have, has any thought been put into relocating the garage in order to, to you know, create less impervious area by, by removing some of that driveway area? Uh, definitely has been considered, um, but
but you go to move it and it has impacts other where other places else as far as view. Um, view would be the big one uh, that would impact. If I put it onto the east side, it would be within the setback, mm -hmm. um, no, more non-conforming than the existing setback. Uh, but I think view would be the larger consideration, but um, there's possibility maybe we could move it to a different location, but we want to make sure we don't impact uh, views, of course. And uh, I guess my, maybe my final comment or question. Is there, is there any possibility to create the space uh, that the property owner wants or needs or is proposing it within the setbacks? I absolutely could. But again, it impacts. I, under you know. I understand what impact yeah. views. Yeah, I absolutely could. I could put it within the setback and push it further towards the north and be well within all the setbacks. But to, but to be clear, you're, you've arrived at the the proposed expansion in order to to mitigate any Correct. any impact on views. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks. Uh, when you have here uh, your percentage of lot, lot covered by buildings current and proposed, is that the Combined lot, or is that the the, the single lot itself? That's the combined lot. That's the okay. Sorry, there to a follow up question. For, as of right now, are the two lots separated by two different titles? There, yes. Thank you. The, the assessor did hand me paperwork and said he considers them to be one lot now. I didn't, I didn't see deeds or registry information, but the assessor said that he's satisfied that those lots are combined, and, and he does require deeds to be legally combined as a procedural matter. Yeah. Uh, uh, somewhere in the future, those two deeds will be combined into one. We don't know. But that's the perception. That's what the town is working on. Yes. Okay. Right. I, I believe the legal steps have been taken. I, I don't know what, I don't know if it's gone to the registry yet, but I know the procedure, the assessor does require that legal process to take place, and the assessor told me that he's satisfied. Okay. Yeah. We've made the, the uh, description for the one parcel, get it to the owner or record. I, I want to say it's done and complete, but I don't know that for a fact. I don't know. If I may, uh, the two lots is not unique to this property. There's a strip behind everyone. Sir, I'm sorry. If you're going to comment, if you could just step to the podium. Sorry, Mr. Murray, do you have any further comment? Okay, thank you. We just, want, we just want to make sure everybody can hear you Sorry. out there. Yeah. Michael Howard, 15 Rocky Point Lane. Thank uh, you. I just wanted to say that this uh, two lot arrangement is not unique to this property, that there was a strip of land that was sold to all of, the, essentially all of the property owners. So it's at least behind, uh, behind five, seven, nine, 11, and 13. And uh, th those were all done in separate transactions. So I'm, I'm sure they're, in, in most cases, um, they're probably still two, two separate lots, even though they've been that way for, I don't know, 50 years. Thank you. So a lot that's been offered up here this evening. So be, before we go into conversation, just simply as, as a board, I want to ensure that all the board members' questions have been answered by 
both the applicant and by anybody else who spoke here tonight. Are there any follow-up questions before we get into board consideration? I, I have one question uh, for Ben. The front setback here is 25 feet, correct? Yes. The okay. zoning specifies 25 feet. There, there is a 20-foot line on the there, plan. I'm not entirely sure. Well, there, there is an exception in the zoning to go down to 20 feet if your two nearest abutters are within 20 feet, or the average of your two nearest abutters is 20 feet or less, you can go to 20 okay. feet. I, I didn't analyze that to see if it's true. Okay, thank you. I have a question for Ben. Did the, uh, has any part of this been permitted yet, or is this still all just proposed? Proposed. Any other board questions for the applicant or anyone else who has commented here tonight? All right. Hearing none, we'll then close the hearing to public comment and then move into board consideration and discussion. And Where do you start? start on I'll raise side. the first one. This <laughs> application reminds me of, of uh, two properties side by side that did not have a view of the ocean. This would have been um, down near the lobster shack. Exactly what I was thinking of. Yep. Yeah. And exactly. so um, the first in time was the, to develop their property was the one further away from the beach. And they added a, a second story that had a, a picture window that looked down across the back of the yards, down to the beach. And we struggled with that application because the, the neighbor next door wanted to not just build up, but they wanted to do a garage as well. And I don't recall the, the nuance of that application other than it was denied or withdrawn. So because the, there's too much blocking of the view uh, for the person that had established view in the back. So I, I just wanted to raise that as an issue here for us. When we're talking about the views, it's, it's not just standing on your property. It's actually the, the thing that gives your property value as to just walking on your property, looking out and seeing something. So I just wanted to raise that as a talking point. I'd like to say something. Um, when I reviewed this application at home, I had written a long list of objections and questions that I had with this application before I heard anything here tonight. And primarily it relates to the garage from my point of view. It's should be torn down and moved away from the property line. It's far too close from a safety point of view to have a wooden structure only two or three feet from the property line. And it, in its existing condition, it impacts the enjoyment and usability of the adjoining property. So I, I was not happy to see that for their own convenience, they propose rebuilding the same garage in the same location, only th two or three feet from the property line. The other objection I had was the massive expansion of paved area, which has a very negative impact on the yard areas of the two adjoining houses. Who wants? to look at driveways and cars driving around in your backyard. And I, I thought that again was just for their own convenience. It wasn't for necessity. I didn't buy the arguments I heard about that this plan being the best option for addressing the concerns of the neighbors. I had specifically asked whether he had talked with the neighbor because it didn't seem just from the plan that was given to us that they had because there were too many inherent objectionable features to this plan. Following our last meeting where we had a similar situation of a garage very close to a property line where they were actually adding a second floor on it, I met with uh, Ben and I told them I was very uncomfortable with our vote on, on that case to approve it because it was so close to the property line. 
that it, it might raise fire code issues. And I told him to tell applicants from now on that if they had situations where garages were only a foot or two from the property line, to tell them that they would get an automatic no vote from me if they proposed to either rebuild it in the same spot or add a second floor onto it if it's only a foot or two from the property line because they can't contain their own construction activity within two feet. So automatically that would have, you know, months of severe impact on the adjoining property. And for those reasons, after we're done discussing, I would like to offer a motion to deny this application. I'll keep going down the line and offer my two cents on this. You know, the, 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 I, I try to be as objective as possible looking at these. So what do we consider? We consider increasing to the non-conformity. The non if we're at the 25 foot setback, we're increasing the non-conformity on this one. Um, we're looking at views. Obviously, there are view issues involved here that I think are, are frankly fatal to the application in and of themselves. Um, we're looking at the impact on the septic system, and I'm, I believe there are serious issues with the way the septic system impacts uh, the wetlands district here, and we're looking at the uh, stormwater drainage. And, and again, I think there are serious sort of unresolved issues with that. I, I probably Emotionally, I put that at the top of my list. I think objectively, it's probably a little bit lower, but I still think that, that that's an issue. And so that's, to me, basically a failure of the application on all four criteria that we um, objectively consider here. So I don't have anything to add beyond, as, beyond that. As a point of order, I think I did hear a motion from Tim, so I just want to clarify that that is, that is on the floor. And so we, we do have a motion um, to deny the request of Mr. Small, owner of the property at 5 Rocky Point Road, uh, map U14, lot 14 and 22, to, ex to expand the non-conforming single-family dwelling garage based on section 19-4-3.B.4 of the zoning ordinance. And I think what I'm hearing from uh, Kevin is that we have a second. I will second that, okay. yes. Okay. So uh, that is the motion that, that's on the floor. Um, additional comments from the board? Yeah. Um, I, this is a really, this is a tough one for me. Um, I, I'm really sensitive to the view issue and uh, Ms. Broussard brought up some great points. But I also, uh, I want to point out a couple things. Um, the applicant could have uh, brought a building permit application uh, to, the, to Ben uh, to construct essentially the same square footage within the setbacks. It would have pushed everything um, back to the rear of the lot um, and would would greatly, much more so, impact the views than than the plan that's here before us tonight, and it, and, and that application would not have been before us. Um, so, I I do want to recognize that the applicant's um, efforts there, and whether or not he, they've gone far enough, I, you know, I'm not convinced uh, one way or, any, or another. Um, that said, I. It, you know, I, I too <laughs> hate the location of this garage, um, and, and I know we're getting into we're getting into a lot of site plan issues that you know may not specifically um, be stated in in the standards we're reviewing this against, but um, but 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 also sort of have an impact. What we are reviewing do have an impact on some of these. Um, some of these design choices. Um, I too hate how the how the driveway loops around back. There's a, a ton of impervious area. Um, you know, I, I, I understand that maybe existing topography would would prevent them from accessing that garage from Rocky Point Lane. But um, 
you know, I feel there's got to be a there's got to be a, a better solution. Um, so, you know, again, I would, I would encourage the applicant, if this is going the way I think it's going, I would encourage the applicant um, or give my two cents to the applicant that there's, there's probably a better solution. I don't think it's the solution of building within the setbacks because I think that that obliterates all views. Um, but I think, I, I think there's a middle ground here um, where the applicant can work with, with the abutters um, and hopefully come back with a, with a plan that, that's, that satisfies more of, more of the standards. Thanks. And I'll jump in. I'll just say quickly, because we've been long-winded on this, uh, ditto to, to Michael's comments. I feel much the same way. This is, a, I think, a, a closer application to me than, than perhaps for, for Tim and Kevin. But, um, I think Ms. Broussard did raise some, some important points that we need to acknowledge here, and, and uh, so I think I'm on board with the, with the motion myself. Uh, I jumped over you, Aaron. That's okay. I'm with you, Mike. Okay. Um, I just had a question for Kevin. Yeah. Could you identify the nonconformity just so we can focus on that particular point? So I was asking Ben about the 25 versus 20 foot setback, and, and this plan shows a deck that encroaches into the 25 foot setback. So that was, to me, the increase in the nonconformity. I don't see that as I'm, I don't, I don't want to talk about decks and nonconformity for too long, but. Don't, 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 don't give us on that. No. <laughs> but that, that was. I mean, if, if we could resolve that issue, I still have other issues that would lead me to support this motion, but um, that, I think the way that is some of us would here. see it is the front corner of the house is maybe 15 feet from the front property line, and the proposed deck is maybe 20, 22 feet from the property line. So in my view, it's not increasing that nonconformity. But that's just a, that's just a. All right, how about the other point? deck near the garage? Yeah, that actually, the landing, I guess, right? Comes over that. Honestly, I didn't focus too much on that. But that's being removed. The, the landing is being removed. That's being removed. Then the other deck, I think, uh, what line is this? I think that's fine. I think that's within the, the 25 feet. So what we're talking about is the front deck along the property line that abuts the Correct. Lake. Yes? That, that's what I'm talking about, correct. Yes? Right, so we're not talking about the deck near the garage. We're talking about that little sliver. Um, correct, just the sliver on the, the front on the Rocky, Point, Rocky lane Point Lane side. Okay. And how about the, the point about um, that there is space elsewhere in the property, but that impacts the view anyways. So doesn't the applicant- Look, I, I, think, I think there's, look, there, uh, I, I approach this with the goal that we're, we're trying to help everybody make a better place and you know preserve their own property values, and that includes the people who are bringing the application and the abutters and the, the town in general. So, I, I mean, I agree that there's probably a solution here somewhere. I'm certainly not smart enough to see it, but you can, you know, uh, there's probably some way here to preserve view corridors, accomplish what the owners want to accomplish, and make everybody as least unhappy as possible. So the house near the lobster shack, those are second story views that we're talking about. So here, the primary, primary views that we're talking about are standing five, six feet high views off the deck of the backyard, that type of views. So what happens if the applicant puts up a fence? That, that's, you know, as long as it's within code, sure. Uh, I don't know that I distinguish between kind of primary, secondary, tertiary views that somebody has. There are views that are more or less guaranteed, um, and there are views that aren't. Yeah, Matt, Matt it, can I, I want to make a point that the image number two, which shows a great view from Ms. Broussard's deck, 
is looking at the ocean straight through the uh, a very buildable area on on yep. on the uh, subject parcel. Yep. So that's a view that the applicant has every right to to build within. Yep. Yep. Without even seeing us, they could stay within yep. the their that's setbacks. Right. Yep. That's right. Mm -hmm. Or they could put up a, put up a fence. Yeah. Right. I'm, okay. I'm just, <laughs> just food for thought for the neighborhood. Is to continue <laughs> forward with this. Um, all right. Well, I, I, I think we've discussed this to the fullest extent necessary. I like to think so. Uh, hearing no further discussion, are we comfortable with voting on the pending motion? All in favor of the motion to do, deny the application. Right, that is unanimous. Can I make a point? Regarding the findings, I, I do not think the applicant was proposing to increase the nonconformity, just from a findings perspective. And I, and I think we, you, yep. you guys have other things. I don't, I don't think we need to mince that one unless we want to, but, but the applicant is not proposing to get closer to the road than they are presently. Right. Right. Do you need findings on a denial? Or? Let me take a stab at them and you, you guys can help me along here. Um, I'll read the proposed findings of fact. Proposed finding one, uh, the property is a non-conforming lot in the RA zone. Proposed additional finding one, the Zoning Board of Appeals has considered the size of the lot, the slope of the land, the potential for soil erosion, the location of other structures on the property and on adjacent properties, the impact on views and the type and amount of vegetation to be removed to accomplish the relocation. Proposed additional finding two, the proposed structure will not increase the nonconformity of the existing structure. Proposed additional finding three, the proposed structure is, is not in compliance with the setback requirement to the greatest practical extent due to the location of other structures on the property on, and on adjacent properties, the impact on views, and the type and amount of vegetation to be removed to accomplish the relocation. So you see what I did there with proposed additional finding three is I basically incorporated what I think our conversations and conclusions were based upon the, the language of the, of the ordinance. Um, and I would seek a, a motion to uh, approve those findings, of course, subject to any, any friendly amendments or any amendments for that matter. So moved. Second. Okay. And, and discussions on the proposed findings as far as if there's anything else we need to tweak. All right, hearing none, all in favor of the proposed findings of fact. That is unanimous. Thank you all. I, I uh, like to think we helped here tonight, but I know that conversations and discussions will be ongoing and, and hopefully you'll be able to work it out over there. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody need a quick break? We've got one more agenda item. Yeah, let's let's call. Let's uh, take five.
right, are we back? Ready to go? All right. Here. Our final agenda item of the evening, uh, new business, uh, request number four, is to hear the re request of Jeffrey and Kendra Davis, owners of the property at 12 Beverly Terrace, to expand their non-conforming single-family dwelling based on section 19-4-3.B.4 of the zoning ordinance. Uh, and there is a note on the agenda that a similar zoning board application was approved on January 24th, 2017, but uh, the Davises have changed their plans and therefore need to get the updated plans approved. Uh, ben, you've got any comments on this latest application? Uh, that pretty much sums it up. Uh, Jeffrey and Kendra were in front of the board a little over a year ago with a similar proposal to add a second story to the house and also expand horizontally. The zoning board approved that application. Uh, getting costs, building costs, were coming in a little high is my understanding and so they needed to change their plans a little bit and uh, made, made their proposal not consistent with their original approval. So they're, they're back. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Davis, welcome back. Thank you. And uh, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, so what we have here is um, an expansion up from our existing uh, footprint, the original house built in 1940. Um, it's consistent in the neighborhood. There's several, several other houses that have done just this uh, to gain more space. Um, we also have supportive letters from both of our abutting neighbors saying they approve of our project. Um, and we appreciate your consideration for our project. And a uh, uh, board question for Mr. and Mrs. Davis. Could you describe what the changes are? Uh, I actually was not at that meeting in that January. Uh, so what, what's different? Oh, um, so our original plan was to basically build a bigger cape where we would um, move the gable roof um, to the rear and extend the roofs down um, to the um, front of the house all the way to the back. This also in, um, involves site work because part of the first floor um, rear of the house is on sauna tubes and we would have needed to um, excavate and pour some sort of foundation under that, which added to the cost. Um, so with the, the new project, there's no site work involved. Um, the gable roof is consistent with the current gable. Uh, the ridge is consistent with the current ridge, um, so it's able to rest on its current foundation. So it's, it's uh, I guess, less, less involved, um, but still gains the extra, the second bathroom and the bedrooms that we we're interested in. So it sounds as though it is probably sort of less invasive, less intrusive on the property than the, than the prior application? Correct. Okay. And so you've got a letter in here from the Foley's and they're to the left of you as you're looking at the front of the house? Yeah, they're the closer um, house and um, yeah, they are appro have approved. And are the Garrett's then on the other side? Correct, yes. Okay. One of my board members asked about what's the change. And, and so on the application, the, on the one that's colored, uh, it's the dark gray, essentially that's the new build, right? Yep, and so yes. So you compare the, the photographs, and it's essentially you're slicing off the second portion of the, of the building and raising it, in whatever, eight feet or so, and putting the cap back on. Mm -hmm. Is there any, any real increase to the square footage of the roof? Uh, no. I'll ask this one. Are there any views that might be impacted? <laughs> we are not near the ocean. We can have a discussion about that. <laughs> oh, 
Okay. Um, no, nope. no, there, there really aren't. We have a, a forest kind of behind our house, and all the houses sit on a circle um, around a green area. It's very nice. Um, okay. So, I mean, everyone could build 10 stories and still look at the green area, I guess. So, one of the questions that we may ask is about the views into your neighbor's house. Um, so, could you identify in the application? paperwork here, which would be the house on either side that you would be, because it looks like it's those are single stories and you would be going up the second story. So is that, is that the two houses there on either side? Yes. The two houses on either side, so the Foley's are the closest to us. It's actually their garage is, is quite close to us and then their house. It's a story and a half, so they do have a bedroom on the second story. Um, our house would be positioned so it kind of does angle away so it's not like you're just looking in each other's windows um, but it, again they've seen these plans and approved the project um, the garrets on the other side are a little bit farther away um, and they have kind of a salt box style so actually we'd really be kind of right on the same level even though it's listed as a story and a half it's not really that much taller in that style um, Again, I mean, it's a it's a close neighborhood, so you know we, we close our curtains. Um, but they she's approved the project and is supportive. Further questions for the applicants at this time? Hearing none. Thank you both. Thank you. We may call you back up for something, but <laughs> now you can take a seat. Uh, any other members of the audience who wish to comment on this application? Okay, thank you. Uh, ben, did you get emails, calls on this? No, I haven't. Okay. Well, then I, I think I'm safe in saying that uh, the, the public comment portion of this meeting is concluded. Uh, what are the board's wishes? I'll make a motion to uh, approve the request of Jeffrey and Kendra Davis, owners of the property at 12 Beverly Terrace, Map U28, Lot 41, to expand their non-conforming single-family dwelling based on Section 19-4-3B4 of the Zoning Ordinance. Second. We have a second. A discussion. I, I'll lead off. The application seems in order. It's, it's clear to me that this project is probably uh, less intrusive, has less of an impact on both uh, the applicant's property and the surrounding properties than the early application that we approved. Um, seems like this is a open and shut case for us for, for a change this evening. <laughs> I'm very comfortable voting in favor of the motion. I concur. I just wanted to raise an issue as to the volume point. Where is that in the ordinance? And you increase the size of the house. It, there, it is not, unless you're. That's okay. Thank you. Okay. okay. <clears throat> it's getting late. Any further conversation, discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? That is unanimous. The motion carries. The application is approved. As far as findings of fact, I will read the proposed findings of fact. Proposed finding one, the property is a non-conforming lot in the RC zone. Uh, the zoning board approved a similar expansion on January 24, 2017, but the applicants have made changes to their plans that caused them to need a new, appro new approval. Uh, proposed additional finding one, the Zoning Board of Appeals has considered the size of the lot, the slope of the land, the potential for soil erosion, the location of other structures on the property and on adjacent properties, the impact on views, and the type and amount of vegetation to be removed to accomplish the relocation. Proposed additional finding two, the proposed structure will not increase the nonconformity of the existing structure. Proposed additional finding three, the proposed structure is in compliance with the setback requirement to the greatest practical extent. We seek a motion to approve the proposed findings. So moved. Second? Second. Thank you. Uh, discussion, any additional points you think we need to touch upon in the findings? Good. Right. 
Hearing no further discussion, all in favor of approving the proposed findings. Aye. It's unanimous, they are approved. Thank you both for coming back before us. Sorry we kept you waiting around tonight. Uh, and I think we are adjourned. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>